feet. Brings the Trojans up. A minute 13. All that remains. A quarterback keeper. Touchdown, USC. For the first time in four years, USC had beaten UCLA. With the victory, the Trojans reclaimed their most prized possession. The city championship was theirs once more. Today, from the Rose Bowl, it's a renewal of one of the most colorful and intense rivalries in all of college football. It is a battle for Los Angeles. It's USC versus UCLA. from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. The Prime Ticket Network presents Crosstown Rivals, UCLA and USC. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jeff Witcher. We've got a windy day here in Southern California. The Rose Bowl is rocking. When these two teams get together, it's all out war. USC comes in 7-2 overall, 5-2 in Pac-10 play, while UCLA is 6-3-1 overall, and they're 4-2-1 in conference action. Let's bring in my broadcasting partner, a man who knows about big college football games, former Notre Dame star Jack Snow. Jack, this is really a unique rivalry, not only to these two uh, teams play in the same city. A lot of these kids have played together or against each other ever since elementary school. Well, they have, and the thing that makes it such a great rivalry, and I'll take you back, when I was a kid growing up in Long Beach, so I'm familiar, there were two big key games that you listen to across the country. One of them was the Army-Navy game, and the other one was the USC-UCLA game. The USC-UCLA game pitted father against son. It broke houses apart for weekends. Uh, a brother would go to SC, and the other brother would go to uh, UCLA, and it's amazing what happens, and the only other rivalry to me that may rank as big in this city is Carson and Banning. Well, that's right. Both teams are bowl bound. It will be the Citrus Bowl on New Year's Day for USC where they'll face Auburn and the Freedom Bowl will be the site for postseason play as far as UCLA is concerned. They'll take on either the Air Force Academy or BYU. This rivalry goes back to 1929. USC leads it 31, 18, and 6. There's so many memories, so many great plays. Remember that great run by O.J. Simpson for USC? USC back in 1967. The old 23 blast play. Here you see OJ go 64 yards against the Bruins. Brings SC back and they go ahead and win the ball game 21 to 20. OJ Simpson, the former future Heisman Trophy winner and all pro running back of the Buffalo Bills. SC dominated in the 60s and 70s. Here in the 1980s, the dominant team has been UCLA. They have some memories. Remember the great catch by Freeman McNeil in 1980. Watch this ball. It's deflected here by Jeff Fisher of the Trojans. McNeil, McNeil stays with it, makes a nice catch, takes it in for a touchdown and brings the Bruins back 20 to 17. UCLA winning four of six so far. They also had a three-game winning streak snapped last season by USC. One of the keys in today's game will be the play of the quarterbacks. Matt Stevens of UCLA, Rodney Pete of USC. We'll put the spotlight on those two and we come back to the Rose Bowl right after this. A capacity crowd on hand for this one at the Rose Bowl between USC and UCLA. You know, they call the Trojans the new look Trojans and justifiably so. In years gone by, they'd give it to a talented tailback and go student body left or student body right and win football. Not in 1986. The catalyst of the offense is young quarterback Rodney Pete. And Jack, he's as good as they come in the Pac-10. Rodney Pete's having a good year. There's no question about it. The 6'2", 190-pound sophomore. He's vastly improved in reading his coverages. He's a very dangerous type runner. He'll scramble. He's number four in the Pac-10 in total offense. He's thrown eight touchdown passes and nine interceptions. We talked to Coach Donahue on Pete. I think controlling Rodney Pete is a key. Uh, I believe Rodney Pete is the player that makes USC's offense go. Uh, USC has a terrific offensive line. They have very strong running backs uh, and excellent wide receivers. But the man who puts it all together and the player who wins uh, and makes that football team work, in my judgment, is Rodney Pete. 
UCLA will have to contend with SC's Rodney Pete. SC's defense will have to contend with fifth-year senior Matt Stevens, who will be at the controls for UCLA. They need a great game from him today, Jack. He has to have a good day. He had a good week last week against Washington. Matt Stevens, he's six foot, 185 pounds, senior. Nine touchdowns, nine interceptions. Good quarterback. We talked to Coach Tolner about Matt Stevens. I believe again they, they have to make some plays with Matt Stevens and Matt has a strong arm, extremely strong arm and, and statistically has had a good year. Uh, I think it's the same old thing if the expectations of your team are real high and they haven't quite got you know, uh, where they wanted to be, then the quarterback takes the brunt of it. But I think Matt Stevens has had an excellent senior year. And I think his statistics will bear that out. And you can bet Matt Stevens would love to play the game of his life. This is it for him as far as going against his crosstown rival, USC. And the USC Trojans come onto the Rose Bowl floor here in Pasadena. And of course, half the capacity crowd cheering and the other half booing. The head coach of USC in his fourth year, Ted Tolner. And what a job he has done this season. He has silenced some of the critics. Of course, the others will be silenced if he wins the rest of the games this season. And now, the home team, the UCLA Bruins, take the field. UCLA's fine head coach in his 11th year at the helm, Terry Donahue, the winningest coach in UCLA history. We are delighted you're aboard the prime ticket net. We'll have the opening kickoff for you right after this. Here at the Rose Bowl where UCLA won the flip however they have deferred to the second half so USC will receive and UCLA will be kicking off UCLA will be defending the northern goal to our left as head coach Terry Donahue paces the sideline and on the southern side it will be USC receiving Ted Tolner Hoping for another victory against UCLA. His club came from behind and beat them last season, 17 to 13. Kicking off will be number 28, Wes Denton. He's out of Los Gatos, California. And deep for USC will be Lonnie White, number 82, and number 8, Cleveland Coulter. Lonnie White needs just one more return to break Ray Butler's single-season mark, set back in 1978. We're underway. And it bounces into the end zone after White had touched it, and it will be a touchback. So the Trojans will have the football first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Coming in to lead them at quarterback, Rodney Pete, the sophomore from Overland Park, Kansas. And what a job he has done in this, his second season. He began his starting career at the tail end of last year, taking over for Sean Salisbury. He sends Ken Henry wide to the left side. Split backs behind him. Ryan Knight starts at tailback and fullback Todd Steele gets the call and big yardage. And we've got a fumble. USC holds on to the football. The rest of the offense for USC, Steele at fullback, Knight at tailback, Ken Henry at split end, Randy Tanner at flanker, and Eric McKee the tight end. The offensive line, Parks and Parkinson on the weak side, Katnick at center, Briegel and Cadigan on the strong side. It'll be second down and four from the 26-yard line for USC. Ryan Knight right up the middle. Jim Waller 
who suffered a pinched nerve in his neck last weekend against Washington, starting for UCLA, makes the tackle. The defensive front, Batchkov, Toomey, and Waller for the Bruins. The linebacking core on the outside, Lake and Smith inside, Greg Bolin and Ken Norton, Jr., and the fine Bruins secondary. Chucky Miller and Daryl Henley at cornerbacks, Craig Rutledge at strong safety, and Daryl Henley at free safety. Third and two for USC. Balls on the 28-yard line. Pete to throw. He's got plenty of time, and he fires incomplete, intended for John Jackson at the 36-yard line. He had Jackson on a little curl pattern, Jeff. There's no question. It was great observation. It was great alertness by Rodney Pete. Rolled out to his left a little bit, got the ball in there, but Jackson could not maintain control. So it'll be fourth and two, and in to do the punting is Chris Spurl, averaging 38.3 this season. Spurl out of Fountain Valley, California. The lone deep man for UCLA is Bob Garibaldi, and he calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 20-yard line. Check that. That was not uh, Garibaldi. I think they're going to spot that ball about the 43-yard line, I believe. That was Clifford Irvine. Matt Stevens comes in for UCLA. Stevens, the fifth-year senior. Thrown for nine touchdowns, also nine interceptions. Split backs behind Stevens. Gaston Green and James Primus. He's getting wide, going to get sacked back at the 30-yard line. Marcus Cotton. Ron Brown also was there. The rest of the UCLA offense, Gaston Green at tailback, Anderson is split in, Durrell at flanker, Tonella tied in, Greenwood has a sore arm, so it's Prima starting at fullback. Rogers, Cornish, Goble, Zwanevelt, and Kidder, the offensive line, which averages 264 pounds. Second and 19 for UCLA from their own 31-yard line. On the play action, rolling left, Stevens, and he's going to keep the football, and he is chased out of bounds at the 38-yard line. That's... Defensively up front for the Trojans, Willison, Owens, and Ryan. The linebacking core has Marcus Cotton and Ron Brown outside, Rex Moore, the leading tackler, and Keith Davis inside. And their fine secondary, Lewis Brock and Greg Coet at corners, All-American Tim McDonald at strong safety, and Junior Thurman at free safety. Third and 12 for UCLA. Stevens... We've got a whistle now, so they stop the play. Maybe a delay of game or too much time. I'm not sure yet. It's hard to say. I don't think they took a lot of time before the snap of the ball. Our referee today is Larry Thompson. And he's marching a penalty against UCLA. Dead ball. Encroachment by the offense. Still third down. UCLA's Terry Donahue, the club has averaged eight wins under him. It'll be third and 17 for the Bruins on their own 33-yard line. 12 minutes and 38 seconds to play. First quarter, no score. UCLA and USC. Now they shift into the eye. Primus and Gaston Green. Green gets the call. And he breaks loose across the 40, up to the 44-yard line. Brought down by Dwayne Garner and... Cleveland Coulter. Gaston Green having an outstanding year. He's carried the ball 181 times already for 915 yards, averaging five yards a pop, scored 10 touchdowns and a long of 63 yards. Harold Barkate to do the punting, averaging 42.7. And he gets it away. Randy Tanner deep for USC, takes it on his own 10-yard line, and he is hit and dropped right in his tracks. Great coverage by special teams for USC. 47-yard punt for Barkay. No return. So SC will take over deep in their own territory.
interesting to see the game plan of the Trojans here. I think what they're uh, primarily going to do, they're going to try and attack the UCLA Bruins with their running game naturally. They're going to run in behind big Jeff Briegel and Dave Cadigan and John Cat at the center and try and work a little bit maybe on Terry Toomey, the nose guard of UCLA. Ryan Knight, and he gets very little yardage, maybe one yard. Lake was in on the tackle along with Craig Rutledge. Rutledge leads the UCLA defense in tackles with 87. He also leads them in interceptions with five. Toomey not a big guy playing the nose tackle for UCLA. He's only 228 pounds, but he has great strength and great ability to slide up and down the line of scrimmage. Of course, those secondary guys, they really fill in a hurry, such as Craig Rutledge did on the last play. Tanner wide right, Henry wide left, split backs, and Pete the throw. Good protection, fires complete over the middle to tight end Eric McKee, and he's down close to the 18-yard line. Craig Rutledge in on the tackle for UCLA. McKee caught the ball. Ken Norton Jr. also helped out for the Bruins. Martin and the tackle. Smart play by Henry. It looked as if in his drop back he may have wanted to come over here to the left and try to go to Henry. He did not. Pete stayed right with his tight end who ran a little simple curl, got the ball in there where the ball was available to be thrown. Paul Green into the lineup for USC, and the single remaining back is Ryan Knight. Knight gets the football. Craig Bolin wraps him up, but not before he picks up yardage to the 21-22 yard line. And if they give him forward progress, that will be enough for a Trojan first down. He got First it. down, USC. He picked it up. Knight had a great performance last weekend, 204 yards, 36 carries, and four touchdowns. He now has 500 100-yard games in his career, and ironically, two have come against UCLA. Last year, he had 147 yards. Two years ago, 100 yards. No score. First quarter, 10 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the period. Pete fumbles a football, but he gets it back, and he gets maybe a yard out of it. See some of the action down there. Some of the young men, Dave Cadigan, getting, getting into a little shoving match with one of the Bruins already. We're still just early in the ball game. Ted Toner would love to beat UCLA. His record against the Bruins is one and two. His first win came last season, as we mentioned earlier. Second and ten for USC. Todd Steele gets the call. And he's down at the 25-yard line. Again, working on the middle of that Bruin defensive line. But the Bruins holding tough. They're doing a good job. They're stacking everything up. They're, what they're doing on that particular play is they're shoving Briegel and Cadigan. They're allowing them not to penetrate. No across the line of, limit, uh, line of scrimmage charge, blowing them out of the way. They're holding their own. They're doing a good job of it. Third down and eight for USC. Jackson in the slot left. And now Pete running for his life. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Frank Batchkoff put the pressure on, and Greg Bolden shoved him out of bounds. So a nice defensive job by UCLA on that series. Credit the Bruins secondary for that one because the zone coverage two-on-one on both sides of the field is the reason that Pete had to roll out of the pocket. So again, a punting situation for the Trojans, and Spurl back at his own nine-yard line. Gifford Irvine, the deep man for UCLA, back at his own 42-yard line. Spurl gets it away. And it takes an SC roll to the 47-yard line. We've got a penalty flag back at the 10-yard line, roughing the kicker. So, let's wait for the official word. Illegal procedure against the offense, running into the kicker against the defense. They offset, play will be repeated. They're going to do it again. They're going to put that ball down and, and tee it up and do it again. Let's look right here and see what happens. There it is right there. That's a slight, just a slight bump. Nothing fantastic. He goes down good. He acts very good on his way down. 
Sproul does a good job of that. Good enough for an Academy Award or an Emmy nomination? Well, the way he came off the field after, you know he's okay, so he wasn't really shaken up at all. So on the offsetting penalties, the play will go over. It'll be fourth and nine from the 24-yard line. So Chris Pearl counting heads to make sure they don't have too many men out there. He'll try it again. Remember now, Spurl's kicking into a 25 to 30 mile an hour wind. He's going to get the nose of that ball over. Irvine calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 42 yard line. So a 34 yard punt for Chris Spurl. Capacity crowd 98,000 here today. No score with eight minutes and 42 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Line. Matt Stevens brings them out. Carl Durrell wide to the left side. Out of the eye. Willie Anderson is split out to the right side. Gaston Green and he picks up good yardage across the 45 up to the 46 yard line before Keith Davis one of the fine inside linebackers of the Trojans brings him down. You know, we talked earlier about uh, Terry Toomey, the nose tackle of the UCLA Bruins, being very light in weight at only 228. On the other side of the ball, Dan Owens, the nose tackle for SC, is only a freshman. 6'4", 235-pound freshman, so the Bruins are going to attack him early in the ball game. Marcus Greenwood is now in at fullback. Paco Craig is wired to the left side, along with Anderson. Green gets the pitch, and he's into USC territory, down at the 47-yard line. Keith Davis again in on the stop for USC. Gaston Green, what a tremendous season he's had. He had another 100-yard performance last weekend against Washington. That gives him five straight, his sixth of this year, the 11th of his career. That ties him for third on UCLA's all-time list with the Otis Brown. First and 10 from the USC 47-yard line. We've got whistles blowing. will go against UCLA. Set ball, encroachment of the neutral zone by the offense. Still first down. One of the officials explaining the call to head coach Terry Donahue. First down and 15 now for the Bruins from their own 48-yard line. down to the USC 46 and a half yard line. Tim Ryan in on the stop along with Rex Moore the Trojans leading tackler. Not a bad job so far by the Bruins of keeping that ball on the ground. They don't like that last penalty though which put them in a first and 15. They're going to give the ball to Green. They're going to try and ball control pass it with Stevens. The short ball control type thing for first downs. Split backs behind Stevens. A tight end on the left side is Joe Pickard. Gaston Green gets the call and he's got big yardage. And he breaks it all the way. Touchdown UCLA. Green right here. He's going to take a little handoff right here from Stevens. He busts up inside, gets great blocking from Joe Goble and Alexander. Gets into the secondary. Gets by one, two, three tackles. Lewis Brock, the last man, should have made the tackle, but it shows you the agility of Gaston Green, the peripheral vision that he has when he runs. Outstanding run by the young man. David Brainy out of the hold of David Clinton, and the PAT is good. Timeout on the Rose Bowl floor with six minutes and 55 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Our score, UCLA 7, USC nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. 
So Gaston Green just scampered 46 yards for the touchdown, and UCLA leading it 7 0. Watch it again right here. Now you're going to see him. This is a great shot. Split backs. He takes a handoff from Stevens. Jumps up in there over that left guard position of Brent Parkinson and John Katnick, the center. He gets into the secondary. There's one miss, two miss, three miss. Right. Look at that. Great job of running. Three Trojans had a shot at him. Thurman had a shot. Brock had the last shot. Couldn't come up with it. So Gaston Green accounted for all Bruin yardage on that drive. He now has 73 yards on five carries. Wes Denton set to kick off for UCLA. And that wind blows the ball off the tee, so he has to put it back on. That wind is blowing from the north to the south, so you're going to get the distance with the Bruins in their punting, passing, and field goal kicking game. The Trojans, on the other hand, coming from south to north are heading into the wind, which means that the ball, especially on punts, is going to have to be kept low. You want to keep that ball low. Extra points is going to be tough. Field goals are going to be tough. Passing shouldn't be too bad. There it is right there. You can see it is blowing pretty crisply. Again, Lonnie White and Cleveland Coulter deep for USC. White is the number one Trojan returner. He averages 25.2 yards a return. He did not have a chance to return the last one, if you'll recall. He takes it and decides not to run this one out either. So again, USC will take over on their own 20-yard line. So the Bruins draw first blood, and it took just four plays, 58 yards, under two minutes. Green with a burst and a 46-yard touchdown run. And it's 7-0 UCLA. Six minutes and 55 seconds left. First quarter here at the Rose Bowl. Pete sends Randy Tanner wide to the right side. Henry wide left. USC out of the eye. Play action. Pete is in trouble. And he is sacked back inside the 10-yard line. Doug Wastel. Now Wasser is going to come from the lower right. Good protection up front. Pete stays in the pocket. Unfortunately, his receivers are covered. Now he's got to try and scramble, but Wasser does just one fantastic job. Picks up his fifth sack of the year coming from the outside, operating against Bruce Parks. Wasser out of Georgetown, PA. He's a junior, 6'3", 249 pounds. It brings up second and 18 for USC. The ball's on their own eight-yard line. The pitch goes to Ryan Knight. Try to get outside, and he's not able to. Nice job done by the Bruins. Ken Norton led the charge. Norton has 78 tackles this season. That's second best on UCLA's defense. You watch Norton now. He's number 41. He'll come from the right side of your screen. It's a quick pitch over here to Ryan Knight. He's looking to try to cut it up off tackle. He does. He gets in the hole very nicely. Tries to burst to the outside, but there they are. Three UCLA Bruins to pick him up, Norton being one of them. Randy Tanner is wide to the left side. Alan a double uh, tight end set. Ryan Knight. And again, the Bruins do a good job holding Knight and the rushing attack of USC. I'll tell you what, the Bruins done an outstanding job. Though. That's three series that they've held USC, forced them to punt every time. And what that'll do defensively is it'll just get you more jacked up through the course of the game. It'll get you on an emotional high. You can see that happening to the Bruins. This will be Spurl's third part of the afternoon. Spurl has never had a punt blocked in his collegiate career. There was a close call. Irvine. And he has gang tackled at the 40-yard line. We've got a penalty back inside the five-yard line, so hold everything. I believe we'll have a roughing the kicker penalty. Let's see if we can pick it up right here. That's right. Now that's, a, that's a better call. 44 the reason, yards on that kick. The reason it's a better call is because he can damage his knee right there when he's totally in a prone position like that. That's a good call by the official. That punter extends that right leg 
bounces off that left leg, extends that right leg. He's hanging in midair. He has no protection whatsoever. Good call by Larry Thompson's crew. First foul, roughing the kicker against the defense. First down. So a disappointed Terry Donahue looks on as we take one more look from another angle. See where he catches it right there and just spins him around. Again, a little bit of a good acting job, but still a dangerous way in which to get hit. 7-0 UCLA, 4.45 remaining, first quarter. First and 10 from the 28-yard line for the Trojans. Steele, the fullback. And he got a little bit out of it. Looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, and he crosses the 30-yard line. Todd Steele out of Kingsburg, California. That is just south of Fresno. Gain of three. It'll be second and seven from the 31-yard line. Steele doesn't carry the ball that often, but I'll tell you what, he's got a great yards per carry average. He's averaging 4.36 yards per, ca per carry, and that's excellent. Eric Kaffolzer into the ball game wide left, and the handoff goes to Ryan Knight. He butts a couple of heads, and he gets up to the 35-yard line. Ken Norton brought him down for UCLA, helped out by Brian Jones. I think Norton is really up for this game, Jeff. We were talking about it yesterday, and uh, he wants to beat the Trojans in the worst way. To him, the best part about USC is their marching band. I don't think anybody will quiver that they got a great marching band. There's no question of that. Of course, I don't know if the UCLA coaching staff like to see that in the local newspapers. You know that that went up on the bulletin board in the USC locker room. Bruce Parks is the USC player that is shaken up on the play. It's hard to tell from this angle exactly what's wrong with him. He's up on his feet. It may be a shoulder problem or he may have just gotten dinged. It's a good sign that he's able to come off the field under his own power. Looks like he's a little bit woozy. 7-0 UCLA under four minutes to play here in the first quarter. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jack Snow here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Certainly very uh, happy that you're spending part of your Saturday afternoon with us. Third and three for USC on the 35-yard line. Pete rolling right. Great protection. And it's batted and intercepted by Melvin Jackson. And now they say no catch. The official ruling, no catch. But a great effort by Melvin Jackson after the pass was deflected. Let's take one more look at it. Let's be the judge and jury right here now. You see Pete, he's looking downfield with a slight roll out of the pocket. It's a waggle type play. He finds his receiver, he tries to gun the ball in there. It's tipped in the air. It looks like by Greg Bolin. Does he make the catch? He's got one hand, he brings it in. Now he loses the ball, but then he bounces it. Now the ball's on the ground. Good call by the officials. will be punting. Irvine took it at his own 30, went backwards. Now he crosses the 30. He's up to the 32, 33 yard line. A 37 yard punt, a three yard return. They're working on Bruce Parks, who was shaken up. Parks out of Burbank, California. He's a senior, 6'5", 275 pounds. They're big. It looks like he may have had something in his eye that they're trying to wash it out. And they're the happy Bruins over there. Number 59, Melvin Jackson. Ken Norton, I believe, was the man who batted the pass, and then Jackson almost came up with the interception and could not hang on. Three minutes, 22 seconds left here in the first quarter. I don't want to get Norton mad at me, that's for sure. Not with his family lineage. That's an intelligent move. Yes. UCLA dominating. Rushing wise, 70 to 15. First and 10 for UCLA on their own 33 yard line. James Primus at fullback, Gaston Green at tailback. Green, and he's brought down at the 35 yard line. Tim McDonald from his strong safety position made the tackle. They're fashioning a little space helmet type thing. They're going to take that plastic and put it inside the face mask so the fingers cannot get through the bar and uh, obstruct his or poke him in the eye and mess himself up in any way. Smart move. A lot of teams are going to that today. Derek Donnell in motion. Now he sets up as a tight end on the left side. Carl Durrell wide left. Willie Flipper Anderson wide to the right. UCLA out of the eye. Gaston Green. And a green 
gets up close to the 40 yard line. The tackle was made by cornerback Greg Cohen. Came into today's activity with 68 tackles. Transferred to USC in the fall of 1984 from Glendale College, where he was a JC All American. Third and four from the 39 yard line for UCLA. So Gaston Green has carried the football for UCLA seven consecutive times. Make it eight as he gets the pitch. And he gets up to the 44 yard line, which should be enough for a first down. It is. UCLA has a first down. We'll take a look at 58. Marcus Cotton, the left outside backer. Look at the hand shoving going on right there. He comes in, gets rid of his blocker, number 93. Joe Pickard comes back in on uh, makes the tackle. Excellent job. He's a tough guy. He wants this game. He wants to win it in the worst way. Baco Craig into the game for UCLA, and he comes wide to the right side. Anderson wide left. On the play action, Steven sets up. Complete to Anderson. And Anderson just holding his own against L.C. Brock. A 20-yard pass play from Stevens to Willie Anderson. It's a basic out route going to be run by Willie Flipper Anderson. He's going down 18 to 20 yards. Steven does a good job, avoids a rush, puts the ball a little short, but still it's in there on time on the break. And that's the key. 20-yard reception. Brock never saw the ball, but Anderson did. Great timing route between the quarterback, Matt Stevens, and his wide receiver, Willie Anderson. Willie Anderson, who did not catch a pass last weekend against Washington, catches one in the first quarter in this one. James Green is a pullback. Green a tailback. Green gets the pitch. And he breaks through for good yardage in a very close to a UCLA first down at the 26 or 27 yard line. Brought down by free safety Junior Thurman. Junior, of course, the younger brother of Dennis Thurman. And we remember his name when we talk about USC UCLA memories. Gaston Green, 93 yards on nine carries and one touchdown thus far. Under a minute to play, first quarter. Green is now running for over 1,000 yards in his illustrious UCLA career. And remember, he has one year remaining. Just a little flip, handoff, straight handoff. He's going to get into the line behind the offensive guard and center. He's going to break it outside. He's going to get a good block from his outside receiver on number five, Junior Thurman, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Heads up running. Nice job of running by Gaston Green for a second touchdown. Not bad stats. Ten carries, 120 yards, two touchdowns. We're still in the first quarter. David Franey for the PAT. It's perfect. 27 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And the UCLA fans in a frenzy. The score, the Bruins 14 and USC nothing. Now Gaston Green already with the 100 yards, so he has six consecutive 100-yard games this right now. He has seven this year, 12 in his career. And he becomes the fifth player in the school's history to go over the 1,000-yard mark. The others, Freeman McNeil, Theotis Brown, Wendell Tyler, and Kermit Johnson. And Ted Tolner, a little bit concerned, and justifiably so, but plenty of time left in this one. He's very much concerned because he doesn't want this game to get out of hand. And with the way the Bruins are handling his defensive line and linebackers, and that includes Marcus Cotton, Rex Moore, and Ron Brown and Keith Davis are doing an excellent job on the ground. He knows that the Bruins are going to stay there. They continue to put points on the board like this. It's going to force him to go to the air. He doesn't want to do that. Gaston Green, one of the premier running backs in college football today. You saw him talking with Coach Norm Anderson, the running back coach. He's got to be extremely happy at this point in the ballgame. Denton puts the foot into it. Lonnie White from his own four-yard line. 25, and he 
is tripped up at the 30 yard line by Craig Rutledge of UCLA. So it took UCLA a half dozen plays under three minutes to travel 67 yards and that man Gaston Green 27 yards for his second touchdown of the afternoon and it's 14 nothing UCLA USC in good field position first and 10 from their own 30 yard line. Randy Tanner comes wide left. Ken Henry sent wide to the right side. Leroy Holt now at fullback and Ryan Knight at tail for USC. Rodney Pete throwing on first down. And are they going to call it a catch? Kenny Norton took the ball. Incompleted pass is the ruling. It was intended for tight end Eric McKee. He threw that pass to McKee earlier in the quarter and picked up some big yardage and he comes back to it on the first down of the fourth series for SC. It's a good pass. You don't want to wear it out though but in any event McKee's got to make the catch. Penn State number two in the nation romped over Pittsburgh 34 to 14. There's a shocker Michigan knocking off Ohio State and Michigan will face Arizona State in the Rose Bowl 74 to 10 Texas A&M embarrassed TCU. It's a tight ball game right there. Woo. 14 nothing here at the Rose Bowl in favor of UCLA just 14 seconds left in the period and Rodney Beat comes over to talk things over with Ted Tolner with a timeout call. I think he's, he's talking, uh, Rodney is talking with not only Coach Ted Toner, but also uh, Frank Falks, who is the assistant head coach and in charge of running backs. Interesting conversation. They're talking about reads. Do you understand what you're reading? Do you understand what the Bruins are doing? And they're shifting into play, play calling and audibleizing out. And he's saying, yeah, we can handle it. We'll get after them. When you talk about USC and UCLA, some great athletes, and many of them go on to careers in the, the professional ranks. The Trojans, 64 players. The Bruins, 48 players have turned pro. That's amazing. It is. It's fantastic. And most all of them have done an outstanding job as professional players. Simpson, naturally, his record speaks for himself. He's in the Hall of Fame. The array of offensive linemen that SC has produced, and offensive backs that UCLA has. Second and ten for the Trojan from the 30-yard line. Pete rolling left. Now he's getting pressure, and he's brought down at the 32-yard line. Tempers flaring in the penalty flag, so we'll have a personal foul called on one of the teams. Jeff Briegel very upset for USC. Look at the scowl on his face too, boy. <laughs> he is man. Look at him. He's yeah, yeah. You don't want to fool with him. He's 6'4", 280 pounds, the strongest member of that Trojan squad. He bench presses almost 500 pounds. And SC picks up the personal foul. Let's see if we can check it out now as Pete rolls to his left. He's looking downfield. He can't get it. Here comes the Bruins. Force him back inside. There's a little face mask grab right there. Quickly though, and it's let go, but there's no question it was a face mask grab. It is a, a dead ball foul, so they'll lose it down. Right. I know they didn't call dead ball, that. You can see it. Personal foul, offense, third down. I couldn't see any personal foul in there from, a, from the offense. Did you see anything? I didn't see anything. Two seconds, all that shows on the clock remaining here in the first quarter, and we have a timeout call. UCLA leading USC, 14 nothing. So Terry Donahue has to be happy about things, at least in the first quarter. He's glad he has number 44 on his team. Well, Green's starting off just fantastic today. He's had a couple of problems with some uh, slight injuries, but he's bounced back very well. He's looking strong today. This is a great time in college football. We've got some more scores for you. Number 11, Arkansas, in the fourth quarter, leading SMU big, 34 zip. Rice knocked off Air Force, 21 to 17. Number five, Nebraska, leading number three, Oklahoma, by 10, fourth quarter. Arizona leading Rose Bowl bound Arizona State 21 to 10 in the third quarter. 
Boy, Arizona State always has problems with their uh, rival Arizona. They do every time they go down to Tucson, particularly in Tucson. The Wildcats seem to give them a, one uh, heck of an afternoon of football. Ball's on the 16-yard line. It'll bring up third and 24 for USC. For the last play of the first quarter. On the quarterback draw, is tackled at the 18-yard line by Ken Norton, Jr. And again, tempers are flaring. Jeff Glasser of UCLA is yelling at one of the SC players. Yeah, Jeff Glasser is yelling at Brent Parkinson, number 71, the left guard of the Trojans, saying it was a late hit. There was no need for it. I don't see a flag, do you? I don't see any, no. That's going to happen in this ball game. Now, Larry Thompson, whom you're looking at right now, the official in the white cap, can do one of two things. They can continue to ignore that, and this game might get out of hand, or they better cap it real quick. Well, the first quarter is history. And at the end of one period, it's UCLA 14, USC nothing. We've had some Heisman Trophy winners from both schools. Gary Beeman of UCLA. Burrell punting and Irvine takes it at his own 28 yard line and he's going to try to run it back and he gets up close to the 30 yard line. That was a 54 yard punt and a one yard return. Nice job by USC's Chris Spurl as we begin the second quarter of action here at the Rose Bowl where UCLA is leading USC 14 nothing. That'll help Spurl's average. He's been averaging 38.3 yards a punt on 37 kicks this year. He got a great one away that time. Marcus Greenwood in at fullback. Sore arm and all. And Gaston Green at tailback behind him. UCLA out of the eye. Anderson wide right. Doral wide left. Green gets the pitch. Cuts back inside. He's got great vision. And he crosses the 35. He's up to the 36-yard line. Brought down by Gary Willison. Look at those yards rushing. 117 for UCLA and only 18 for the Trojans. 137 total yards for the Bruins to 24 for USC. SC has got to stop them down here. They've got to get the ball back. They cannot allow them to put scores on the on the board as quickly as they have done in this ballgame. Second and four from the 35 for UCLA. Greenwood. And he's hit by four USC defenders and brought down Ron Brown, Tim Ryan, and Dan Owens. That's one of the youngest parts of the defense for USC is their down lineman. Owens, a freshman, Tim Ryan, a freshman, and Willison, a junior. He's the old man, Gary Willison, who plays the left defensive end for the Trojans. It's third down. Brendan McCracken takes over for UCLA at quarterback, and they'll run out of the wishbone formation. Terry Donahue has been doing this all season long. Nice job by Brendan McCracken. On the option, penalty flags fly. He got up to the 45-yard line. He popped Tim McDonald a good one, too. McDonald came up there to put the clamps on him. But McCracken really met him head on, did a nice job. McCracken basically is an option quarterback. And if the Bruins ran the wishbone here or an option type offense, there's no question that he would be the guy who would be running the controls. Personal foul against the Trojans. Here's McCracken, he fakes inside the green with the fullback, pulls it out of his belly. Now he's got an option to run like he's doing now or pitch it out. He decides to keep it, picks up. Big yardage. There it is right there. It looks like 58 Marcus Cotton may have First fallen down. on Brendan McCracken. Nice job by McCracken. And now the senior, Matt Stevens, is back in at quarterback from the USC 39. It's first and 10 for UCLA. They already lead it 14-0 early here in the second quarter. Gaston Green, and he trips. Gets down to the... Well, they're going to mark it back at the 41-yard line of SC, apparently. That's where his knee went down. Still can't get over with what relative ease the Bruins are moving the football. They're taking advantage of the youngness of the defensive line of SC. They're doing a, a great job, fantastic job by the interior line of UCLA. 
Paco Craig into the game for UCLA. Wide left, second and 12 for the Bruins. Green again, trying to get outside, and he is thrown out of bounds by Marcus Cotton. At about the 37-yard line. Marcus Cotton is quite a character. In fact, you may have read a quote in the Los Angeles Times earlier in the week in the morning briefing section where he said of quarterbacks, the best part of playing linebacker is getting a sack. I love going after a quarterback. For some reason, I don't like quarterbacks. I don't even like our own quarterback when he's on the field. <laughs> Any rooms with him? No, he doesn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's a tough one. Third down and seven for the Bruins. Play action. Stevens with all kinds of time. And it's complete at the 11-yard line where he goes out of bounds. Willie Flipper Anderson. Nice reception. Good for 25 yards and a Bruin first down. And just a great route. This is going to be a corner route. He's going to run it on Lewis Brock. He comes up and wants him to take it inside. He's going to get a little bend inside to get Brock. A little head fake. He comes right back out of it. Brock can't come out of that quick enough. Good pass by Stevens. Look at the concentration. Looks at it all the way in. Touches him before he goes out of bounds. Big, big play for the Bruins. From the 11-yard line, first and 10, UCLA. They lead it 14-0. 26 remaining first half. Gaston Green battles his way inside the 10-yard line. Rex Moore in on the tackle for USC. Rex out of Newport Beach, California. He's a junior. 6'1", 225 pounds. Went to El Medina High School. Second down and eight from the nine for UCLA. Under 12 minutes to play, first half. Carl Durrell in motion, far side. Gaston Green trying to cut back, and he's brought down at the seven-yard line. Tim McDonald and Greg Coet combined Greg on the Coet. stop. Timmy McDonald, the fine athlete out of Fresno, California. He played quarterback at Edison High School in Fresno. In fact, he threw passes to Ken Henry, now a teammate at USC. Greg Coet is out of Burbank, California. Two very big defensive backs, too. 6'3", 205 for McDonald, and 6'3", 210 for Coet, who plays a corner. Very large corner. Third down and five from the six for UCLA. Going in the end zone, and it's batted away at the last moment by Tim McDonald, intended for tight end Charles Arbuckle of UCLA. What a tremendous defensive effort by Tim McDonald. He's mad at himself. He thought he should have intercepted he it. He is. That's the kind of competitor he is as Stevens rolls out. He has a basketball lob pass it in, but watch right there McDonald go up. Looks like it almost should have been caught there by Arbuckle, but he can't come down with it, but it's a heck of a job by McDonald. Just a great effort. Tim McDonald, that's why he's an All-American. kid who was growing up liking football not very much it was his least favorite sport David Franey to attempt a field goal it's up and it's good a 23 yard field goal with 10 and 56 remaining in the first half that makes our score UCLA 17 USC nothing we'll come back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena right after this One of the most disappointed people around right now is head coach Ted Tolner. You don't want to be down 17 nothing this early in the football game but there's a lot of time remaining but he wants to get something going real quick doesn't he Jack. That's absolutely right. He does not want this thing to get out of hand as we mentioned after the second score and is beginning to slip away with him. What the Trojans have got to do now is they've got to take this kickoff and spend some time developing a nice, sustained drive and get themselves a touchdown. Three points, if nothing else, but try to get that touchdown, but control the football, get something, put something on the board. Alfred Velasco is going to kick off now for UCLA. He's wearing a pretty famous number, 25. Remember John Lee, the former kicker at UCLA, wore that number. Cleveland Coulter at his eight. 
is really hit at the 23-yard line by Michael Williams of UCLA. The Trojans in their five possessions have started on their own 20-yard line twice. Here on their 22, once on the 10, and once on the 30. So they had not had real good field position. First and 10, Rodney Pete will see what he can do now with USC's offense. Fires complete to John Jackson. Beautiful catch by Jackson. And it's down at the 46-yard line, a 24-yard reception by John Jackson. I, I believe that's Pete's only his second completion of the day. As you watch him right here, he's going to find Jackson, who splits the zone. UCLA's playing a two deep. He comes right inside the zone, makes a nice catch, good concentration, and comes in and gets popped real good by Craig Rutledge. First down for USC at their own 46-yard line. Leroy Holton at pullback. Play action. Pete again with pretty good time. Looking for Tanner, and he overshoots him at the 20-yard line of UCLA. Chucky Miller, who is a great one-on-one -on -one player, did a nice job covering. Miller had him all the way. There's no question that Tanner did not have Miller beat. Rodney Pete has attempted six passes, and he's completed two for 29 yards. Ten minutes, 22 seconds remaining. First half. So far, it's been all UCLA. They lead it 17-0. Second and 10 for the Trojans. 46-yard line. the 49-yard line brought down by Carnell Lake and Craig Rutledge. Holt hasn't been playing too much this year, but uh, he makes good his opportunities. There's no question of that. He's averaging 3.7 yards a crack. Arizona upsets Arizona State 34-17. Wow. And Oklahoma over Nebraska 20-17. Both finals. Down and seven for USC. Pete drops straight back to pass. Stays in the pocket. Now he flares it to Holt. And he is hit and dropped by Brian Jones at the 44-yard line. As you saw Pete standing in the pocket, you may have thought to yourself, boy, he has a lot of time. He does. There's no question of it because the Bruins secondary, they're going to play a soft secondary because they have a 17-point lead. And Jones is just a freshman, 6'3 and 215 pounds out of Lubbock, Texas. And for the fifth time in the first half, Spurl will be punting for USC. Gifford Irvine standing back at his own 10-yard line for UCLA. He's got the wind at his back, Jeff, he wants to get that ball up in the air. And he does. It goes over the head of Irvine and into the end zone before SC can down it. A 56-yard punt off the foot of Chris Spurl. So first and 10 for UCLA on their own 20-yard line. And the Bruins lead the Trojans 17-0. Lead the Trojans 17-0. Carl Durrell wide left. Anderson wide right. Joe Pickard comes in motion. Now he sets up as the tight end on the left side. Out of the eye. At pullback. Gaston Green. Green gets up to the 23 and a half yard line. Brought down by Keith Davis, inside linebacker out of Los Angeles. With just under eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. What's going to happen now? Donnie's going to have his charges take their time. Let's move the ball down the field. Let's try and keep it on the ground. We'll, we'll throw the ball in certain situations. Ball control passes. Let's wear these guys out. Second and six for UCLA. Stevens hits Paco Craig who goes out 
out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Good for a UCLA first down. L.C. Brock covering on the play for the Trojans. He's done a great job at cornerback for the Trojans this season. Nice route run by Paco Craig, the junior wide receiver. Again, a ball control type pass. 10, 15 yards square out. Makes a nice route. Nice catch. Picks up the first down. From the 33, first and 10 for UCLA. 17-0 Bruins. Eight minutes remaining. First half. Terrell comes in motion. Gaston Green. Is the 35 gets up to the 36 yard line. Marcus Cotton in on the stop, along with Tim Ryan. Well, you can see Cotton becoming a little bit more involved from a defensive standpoint for SC. The first couple drives, you didn't hear too much about him. He was being taken out by the blocking of UCLA. He's got to get more active, more involved, be in on more plays, make something happen for the Trojans. Gaston Green, 143 yards on 17 carries. What a first half. Stevens rolling left now, and he fires, and it's complete. A nice catch made by tight end Joe Pickard at the 42-yard line. Again, a nice catch by Joe Pickard, the junior tight end. Stevens will start, make to his left, and short waggle rollout right here. He lays the ball out. Not a great pass, but watch Pickard go down with his hands, catches the ball in his hand, brings it into his body. Nice job of receiving by Joe Pickard. That's what you teach receivers. Catch the ball in your hands. Matt Stevens, 4 of 5 for 60 yards. Brendan McCracken is in again, and again, the wishbone formation for UCLA. And on the option, he keeps it, and he's got great yardage. He's inside the USC 45-yard line. What a job by Brendan McCracken, the sophomore. I tell you again, very astute play calling. We're going to see it again now. Remember, the outside man has got the trail back. McCracken fakes in here to his fullback, looks at his tailback, and you see one Trojan go for him. Nobody is on the quarterback. Marcus Cotton has got to be assigned to take that quarterback Force him to pitch the ball. He didn't do that. McCracken busts up inside for big yardage. Stevens back in there for UCLA on the play action. And he fires complete to James Primus, who is really hit at the 37-yard line and dropped by Lewis Brock of USC. Primus doesn't catch a lot of passes coming out of fullback spot. That's only his eighth reception of the year. But they're key receptions. And again, make note that Matt Stevens seems to be having an up day. Remember, through the course of the season, he has had some, some times when he's been up and some times when he's been down. He's 5 to 6 for 67 yards. Second and three from the USC 36. Gaston Green. Green inside the 35 yard line, down at about the 33 yard line, and again, tempers flare. First down for UCLA. Charles Arbuckle, he's the third string tight end behind Derek Tunnell and Joe Pickard. Arbuckle, a freshman. So far, it's been a long day for Ted Tolner. Under six minutes to play here in the first half, 17-0 in favor of UCLA. 44 yards for Green, 21 for the USC team. It's just unbelievable at this stage of the game. Unbelievable. Remus and Green behind Stevens out of the eye. Green gets the pitch. Down at the 26-yard line. Ron Brown along with Keith Davis combining on the stop for USC. Ron Brown, he is a big play kind of player. He's a senior out of La Puente, 6'5", 217 pounds. And he had to eat all kinds of bananas during the summer, a dozen a day, he tells me, to put on some weight. And drink five gallons of ice water, too. Second and three from the 26 for UCLA. Green again, and big yardage up the middle. Gets up to the 21-yard line and has enough yardage for another Bruin first down. Interesting, Jeff, watching the SC linebackers, the next time the Bruins come up to the line of scrimmage, watch the linebackers of SC. They are about four, four and a half, five yards off the line of scrimmage as we look at Gaston Green. 21 carries, 156 yards, and two touchdowns still in the first half. But take, take a note, 
What's happening is the UCLA's offensive linemen, they're getting to those linebackers, providing a cushion for Gaston Green, and he's making the most of it. See, look at He just took a quick peek of where he's going to be running. This is the 10th play for UCLA on the current drive. On play action, Stevens has all kinds of time, and he fires incomplete. Intended for James Primus out of the backfield, but he could not hold on at the 19-yard line. Again, heads up quarterbacking by Matt Stevens. He dropped back. He wanted to go somewhere other than James Primus, but he knew where Primus was as his safety valve. He came back, got the ball in the flat to him. Unfortunately, Primus could not make the catch. Matt Stevens, six feet tall, 185 pounds. Second and ten from the 21 for the Bruins. A little over four minutes to play, first half. 17 over their crosstown rival USC. Green gets another call. And he's down at the 15 yard line. And a penalty flag goes down, so we've got a late hit. Junior Thurman made the initial contact. Look at Ted Tolner, that tells it all. Another personal foul. Boy, coaches hate that. That's the third one. Coaches hate that. That's 45 yards that you give the opposition that they do not have to work for. They hate it at any time, but when you're down by 17, whew, that really upsets them. Let's see if we can pick up exactly who the infraction is upon as we see Green bounce out to the outside. He's going to take number five, Thurman, head on. Let's see if anybody comes in late. Looks like Willison. There it is right there. Gary Willison, number 59. There's no foul. So for UCLA, first and goal from the seven-yard line. And the UCLA fans, they're having all kinds of fun here at the Rose Bowl. Under four minutes to play, first half. UCLA threatening for more. They lead it 17-0. Brendan McCracken is in there out of the, the wishbone formation. On the option, he keeps it after faking to Greenwood. He gets down to the five-yard line. Dan Owens and Marcus Cotton combine on the tackle for USC. That was a good job by the left side of the, the defensive line for the Trojans. Rex Moore, Marcus Cotton, Willison, and Dan Owens. That's what you got to do to the wishbone. You've got to stack everything up. Don't give that quarterback any running room whatsoever. So Stevens replaces the sophomore McCracken. Second and five for UCLA. Durrell and Anderson wide to the left side. Greenwood at fullback. Gaston Green at tailback. And now Stevens apparently did not like the defensive alignment that he was looking at, and he called timeout. So he'll talk it over with Terry Donahue. We should mention that part of UCLA's success, certainly uh, some of the credit has to go to their fine offensive coordinator, Homer Smith. 17-0 UCLA with 3.02 remaining until halftime. Homer, Homer Smith does a good job with him. He's an outstanding offensive coordinator, and he has great rapport with his ball players. I want to uh, remind you to stay with us at halftime. We've got some interesting things for you. A look at both coaches, Tolner of USC, Donahue of UCLA, the bull picture, which has certainly uh, become very interesting, and we'll run down the highlights of the first half. The Canadian national team tonight at the John Wharton Center at 7.30 p.m. Music, oh, we've got plenty of it, and two fine bands, a UCLA band, and of course, the famous USC marching band. We understand that Dave Cadigan of USC has been taken into the locker room with a cast on his left leg. The injury is unknown, and we'll try to pass that along to you when we get a report. Cal, 17, Stanford, 11. So Joe Cap trying to go out with a flourish. Oregon romps over Oregon State, 49-28. Danny Thompson now into the ball game for UCLA. Look at that, 45 for USC, 255 for the Bruins. Thompson lines up in a wing position, Greenwood at full, and Gaston Green, and now coming in motion is Danny Thompson. The pitch goes to Gaston Green, and we've got penalty flags all over the place. Illegal procedure would be my guess, Jack. The last couple times that's happened, it's been encroachment on the part of the Bruins, so let's see if it holds true to form. That's right. Illegal procedure on the Bruins. Right. 
Terry's a little upset, but you know he's not crushed by it because he's heck he's sitting on the five yard line. Now he's back to the dead ball. False start. Offense still second down. like he had a haircut too and he's got a haircut recently maybe uh, yesterday or Thursday it's pretty good young man second and goal from the 10 Stevens fires over the middle complete to Anderson and he gets down to the two yard line Willie Anderson wide open as he split the seam of that defense of USC let's take another look from the ground level now this is what you see if you're an actual player he's looking inside here for the seam he finds it now remember this guy's only 166 pounds so when he catches that ball in there amongst all that traffic look at the shots he takes boy he took a couple of good pops there Keith Davis number 60 really nailed him Anderson has three catches on the afternoon thus far good for 53 yards there's some happy Bruin fans UCLA calls a timeout, their final timeout of the first half, and Stevens talking things over with his head coach. Right there in the sunglasses, that's Norm Anderson, who coaches the running backs, and Don Riley, who has the centers, guards, and the place kickers, the older, more mature. The older, more mature? More mature coach, yes. That's he's a nice the, way to put it. He's for the fifth year seniors. Don't forget great NBA basketball action tomorrow night right here on prime ticket as the streaking Los Angeles Lakers winners of eight straight host the Central Division leading Milwaukee Bucks live from the forum. Magic Kareem and company have it in high gear but it will be quite a test tomorrow night because the Bucks have newly acquired Jack Sigma Jerry Cummings and they will certainly put it to the Lakers. Don't miss it. The Lakers and Bucks tomorrow night. We'll kick it off with our warm-up show at 7:15. It's just a beautiful afternoon here in Southern California. 17 nothing the score, 213 remaining. First half. Third and goal from the two. Danny Thompson in motion. Gaston Green, he cuts it back inside. Touchdown, Gaston Green and UCLA. his third touchdown of the game his 13th of the season he has 165 yards on 22 carries and we still have 206 left in the first half oh, I'll tell you what if you looked at this game on paper and you put all the stats together and you looked at the kids you'd never believe it would be this point in the ball game would have this score David Franey out of the hold of Clinton the ball snap by Paul Riley it's up it's good out here at the Rose Bowl with 206 remaining first half it's now 24 nothing UCLA all Gaston Green they send Thompson in motion to the left and it's just a quick pitch over here to Gaston Green he's going to run up in here he's behind his offensive line again doing a fantastic job in there 74 Russ Warner gets a good block Green cuts in in behind him and picks up his third touchdown of the day look at it again right here just a quick pitch nothing fantastic Green kind of glides to his right sees the opening now watch him dart right in there that head down gets a block from Warnick gets into the blue area of the end zone touchdown we have a Trojan down on about the eight yard line Marcus Cotton is the Trojan player that is flat on his back now they're going to help him up Marcus Cross, number 58 is the man injured now he looks a little bit woozy unless he keeps no pressure on one of the legs. Let's watch his his ankle or his knee. If he tries to avoid pressure, you know he's having a problem. It looks like he's got some problem with his right ankle or his right knee. Well, that's a, a real blow to USC because he is one of their talented defensive players, and we hope it's nothing serious. So UCLA on that last drive 
went 80 yards, 14 plays, and it took uh, over six minutes. And then Green, a two-yard run, third touchdown of the game for Gaston Green. And it's 24-0 UCLA with 2.06 remaining first half. Alfredo Velasco getting set to kick off for UCLA. And again, it's White and Coulter deep for USC. Ball goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line. So Velasco will have to try it again. This time from the 30-yard line. You see that ball kind of hanging up. If it gets too high, it just takes off with real good force, but it just kind of hangs up in that wind because he's kicking into the wind. SC is going to want to take this ball now. They've got two minutes left in the first half. They're going to want to get the ball. Now definitely come down, put the ball in the air, and put some points on the board. They're not going to waste any time, I don't think, with any ground game. they got to get something, Jeff, before they go in at halftime, down 24 to nothing. This thing could get totally out of hand if they don't. Well, this is one of the rare times that this game is not for the conference title and a trip to the Rose Bowl, but it doesn't take away the flavor. I'll tell you that for sure. And it's picked up by one of the down linemen who crosses uh, the 35-yard line. So the ball carrier was Jeff Brown for USC. So the Trojans will be in very good field position with 202 left in the first half. Ball's on the 38-yard line. Now this is where Rodney Peet can be very, very dangerous because of his passing ability and improvement and his running, his scrambling ability. Jackson, Tanner, wide right, Henry wide left, split backs, Peet getting pressure, flares it off to Ryan Knight. Knight crosses the 40 and he's up to the 42 or 43 yard line. Brought down by Greg Bolin of UCLA. Dennis Price was also in on the stop for the Bruins. Twenty-four nothing in favor of the Bruins. Rodney Peake gets up to the 45 yard line as he had problems with the snap. They're in their two minute drill. A minute 24 left first half clock is running. Over the middle off of Jackson and Craig Rutledge. Craig Rutledge comes up with the interception. First and 10 UCLA at their own 41. Rutledge his sixth interception of 1986. He's going to look for Jackson over the middle again. He gets the ball in there fairly nicely. Jackson does not make the catch. He gets a hand on it, pops it in the air. Now watch the quick reflexes of 30 Craig Rutledge. He bobbles the ball in the air with one hand, his right hand, and scoops it into his body with his left. It's a good camera shot. That is the 10th interception thrown by Rodney Peet. Gaston Green fighting his way for some yards up the middle, and he's finally thrown back by Dan Owens. They'll spot the ball at the 43 and a half yard line. Under a minute to play, first half. Second and eight for UCLA. with the headset on. Timeout called by the Trojans with just 23 seconds remaining in the first half. 23 seconds, third down and seven balls on the 45. They can hold them again. 
They have one more timeout, which means they would be allowed to return a punt and maybe get a long punt return for a touchdown. That's the only thing that the Trojans can be possibly thinking of. Toner's not quite sure. Ted's he's going, he's shaking his head, then he's scratching himself, and he's just not quite sure exactly what he's going to be able to do. USC has had 25 offensive plays. Gaston Green has carried the ball 24 times himself. And I know it's Gaston Green, and I apologize, but I just like that Gaston. 44-23, Washington over Washington State. Third down and seven for the Bruins. Ball's on the 45-yard line. Play action, Stevens. Throwing deep for Paco Craig, and it's almost picked off. Tim McDonald was with him stride for stride. And Stevens, fortunate it was not picked off. You're absolutely correct. Remember now, when you when you see this play, Stevens has got to lead him more to the outside because you will see Paco Craig, he's got the outside position. The inside position is held by number six, McDonald from USC. Paco does a good job to try to get in there and break it up. McDonald just can't quite make the clean interception. Stevens out, Harold Barcade in to do the punting for UCLA from his own at 30 yard line. Randy Tanner deep for USC. Tanner's got it, and he goes down at the 21 yard line. However, we've got a penalty flag back inside the 35 yard line. And the clock stops with just nine seconds left in the first half. We may have a rushing the kicker. We may have a rushing or running into the kicker. Watch it right here. The ball's up in the air. There's no problem. He gets hit. He gets hit late. And I think I can't quite see him. Michael right. Williams, right. I believe, number 50. 54. I saw Rex Moore in there, too, in front of the kicker on the ground. I wasn't quite sure. Well, that's not what the Trojans want. That's just going to keep that dry. Personal going. foul. Roughing the kicker against the defense. First down. Let's watch it again right here now. Barquet gets the ball. He's extended. One, two. Yeah, there's no question about that. It's obvious. Michael Williams definitely hits him from the backside. So both teams have been called for that infraction. First and ten from the 40-yard line of SC for UCLA. Dropping straight back. Stevens. Now he rolls right. Fires to the sideline complete to Derek Tunnell, who steps out of bounds to stop the clock with four seconds left in the first half. Derek Tunnell, a senior, 6'5", 235, out of West Covina. Derek Tunnell used to play fullback, and they switched in 1984. Anderson wide left. Paco Craig on the right side. Steven fires a Hail Mary into the end zone. And it, it's a touchdown, UCLA. It's UCLA's flanker, Carl Durrell, popped the football, and Ted Tolner is fit to be tied. He'd like to dig himself a hole and jump in. we got some conferring going on by the officials. Let's see what happens. The officials are conferring. I did not see a penalty flag thrown on that last play. I didn't either. What happened was one of the officials had fallen down on a four-yard line. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense. It will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff to start the second half. They're going to call him, I think, for all the guys coming off the bench. Let's watch it again here. But just remember, at the end of this touchdown, they all come off the bench because they're so happy. You see Stevens drop back, and he's just going to put that ball straight up in the air and hope it comes down in one of his receiver's hands. That's exactly what he does. He's throwing into the wind. It's a very high pass. 
Everybody's setting up, getting ready to get the ball. All of a sudden, number eight, Durrell, comes right in there and picks it off and bounces off of two Trojans. Number five, Junior Thurman's in there. Unbelievable. And the PAT by David Franey is good. And the first half is over. Terry Donahue and his UCLA Bruins go into the locker room with a big 31-0 halftime advantage over a crosstown rival, USC. A tremendous first half performance by the Bruins, in particular, premier running back. Gaston Green, who scored three touchdowns. And that man, in his 11th season as head coach, has got to be delighted. We've got a lot coming up at halftime, so don't go wandering off. Take a break and come back to the Rose Bowl right after this. The road a college football coach takes isn't necessarily an easy one. They can experience heartache more often than triumph. But it's the path in life UCLA's Terry Donahue and USC's Ted Tolner have chosen. Each of them know success, and both are well aware of the price it takes. Early 1976, Terry Donahue is named one of the youngest head coaches in major college football. He's become the winningest coach in UCLA history after only 11 seasons. Well, I'm not sure anybody thought I'd survive that long. Uh, trying to survive in Los Angeles is very difficult uh, because of the uh, competition in L.A. and the demand for excellence. Um, but uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting 11-year uh, series, and uh, it's been an interesting job for sure. During his early years, Donahue enjoyed success against everyone but his crosstown rivals, and the criticism mounted. There was certainly a level of frustration in that uh, uh, I think we went four years before we had a victory over USC in a big game. And uh, there's no question that getting over that obstacle and uh, getting a win in that game probably was the single most important turning point uh, of my coaching career at UCLA. And in the 80s, Donahue's teams have been the most dominant in the West. Three times Pac-10 champions. And in bowl games, they have been the nation's best. Four straight New Year's Day victories, starting with a Rose Bowl win over Michigan. A year later, another Rose Bowl victory over Illinois. Then a Fiesta Bowl win over high-scoring Miami. And last year, the Bruins surprised Big Ten champ Iowa in the Rose Bowl. I think probably the run in the 80s is the, the thing that I'm proudest of. Uh, the four consecutive New Year's Day victories, the three championships in four years, the three victories in four years over USC. All of those things, uh, I think, accumulate, and I think they build tradition, and they build the prestige of your program. Terry Donahue was emotional as a player. He's the same as a coach, always concerned about his players. I would say this. Uh, I don't know anybody in coaching that doesn't worry or that isn't concerned, that's still employed. Probably the most important thing is to uh, understand that if you're doing the best you can do, that that's all anyone can ask of you. Um, sometimes your best isn't good enough, but as long as you're doing your best, uh, then no one can ask anything else of you and, and can't ask any more of you. Let's go up, Ted Tolner is also a man who is wrapped up in his job. Enthusiasm remains Tolner's trademark in this, his fourth year as a Trojan head coach. His first season, 1983, was trying. The Trojans struggled, and the critics grew. When things are going wrong, you try to analyze and figure out what you need to do, but, but refocus and not get distracted. I think the worst thing that can happen when, when things are not going the way you want is obviously there's going to be criticism. And if you get yourself so concerned with outside criticisms instead of just trying to focus on what you have to do, you can't pull out of it. But Tolner's handled adversity before. In college, he was one of only 26 who survived the crash of an airplane carrying his Cal Poly San Luis Obispo football team. I, I have a perspective, I think, that may be different than some because of what I went through, but I don't believe it, it helps you... Uh, the instant that something frustrating happens to you, but it helps bring you back out of it. 
and refocus on the next step, your next challenge that you're going to meet, which is the next day you wake up and you go to work. 1984, and only his second year as head coach, Tolner was riding high with victory. The Trojans were Pac-10 champions, and he was conference coach of the year. And in the Rose Bowl, USC upset heavily favored Ohio State. This season, Tolner has guided the Trojans into the Citrus Bowl, where they'll face Auburn on New Year's Day. And he says the job is more fun than ever. When you look at the whole thing in perspective, it's, uh, I love it. It's, it's, it's exciting, it's challenging, uh, there's high risk, but I, as far as uh, meeting the standards of this institution. But uh, I can't think of a better opportunity. If you like to coach football, what better place could you be than to be at USC and be in the week of UCLA game week right now. Hey, uh, I couldn't ask for more in my profession. Tolner remains first and foremost a teacher. Hey, be sure to remind Lonnie now what he has to do in this, huh? Uh, you got to set it up. Starts, you, when you take your first look, if you don't like the team, then come back. Okay? Don't give him any more than your first look. Okay? You come back, come office. back to your backside guy. So I think you're constantly trying to teach when things go wrong or when they go right. And I, and I, I mean, that's what we're out there for, to try to help the people be successful. Ted Tolner and Terry Donahue, two men, two teachers striving for excellence. Statistically, the first half was all UCLA. They had 12 more first downs, 193 yards to 23 rushing, 115 to 29 passing, total yards 308 to 52. No turnovers for the Bruins, and they had the football 1753 compared to 1207 for USC. So the score is certainly supported by the first half stats. And Ted Tolner is hoping that USC now can put some points up on the board here in the second half. So are the USC fans hopeful of some points so they will not be embarrassed to go to school. Imperative here that on the opening kickoff of the second half that UC, USC can hold UCLA, force them to punt the ball, get it back, and move down the field. If they sustain another long drive, it's going to work definitely in the favor of the Bruins. Remember now, they have assessed the penalty on the kickoff, so USC will be kicking from midfield. Don Schaefer is set to kick off. So UCLA will have the football first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. You know, we talked at halftime about what uh, what Tolner was telling his guys as we watched Matt Stevens come on. I can guarantee you that Terry Donahue said, let's keep it up, let's keep the, in the intensity, the enthusiasm, let's do not let down, let's bury in the second half. Stevens with very big numbers in the first half. James Prima starts at fullback. Gaston Green at tailback. Terrell Anderson wide to the left side. Green gets the pitch. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line by Tim McDonald, the strong safety of USC. Big pickup on first down. You don't want to let that happen. You want to shut that down early. Look at that. 25 carries, 177 yards, and three touchdowns. Outstanding. That's a career for somebody. That would have been a career for me if I was a running back in college. <laughs> his previous high this season, 162. His career high, 194. McCracken's in there out of the wishbone. James Primus. First down, UCLA. We've seen McCracken come in now, what, three times or four times to run that wishbone. And, Jeff, the reason they do that is, number one, it just disrupts the defensive signal calling and setting up of the defenses by the Trojans. And it also adds another weapon in Arsenal because you've got an additional running back. On the play action, Steven sets up, and he fires complete to Paco Craig. And Craig brought down by Craig Cohen at the 45-yard line, a 13-yard pass play. Paco looks like he's banged up just a little bit. We're going to see a little play action here by Stevens. You fake it in there with the bare hand to Greenwood. You pull it back out. Looks downfield for Craig, who's running a curl route. He'll come in from the left. Excellent job of finding the open hole in the seam. Maintains his balance. Tries to get all the extra yards he can. He's really popped by Coet. 
It's going to get rough now. Believe me, it's going to get rough this second half. First and ten from the 46 for UCLA. They lead it 31 nothing here at the opening stages of the second half. Ring finally brought down by Tim Ryan. Helped out by Michael Williams, who backs up Marcus Cotton at the outside linebacking slot. And Williams has some big shoes to fill because Marcus hurt himself in the first half. Williams out of Dallas, Texas, and he's just a freshman. Be interesting to see if Donahue recognizes, when I say he, I mean his staff, if they recognize the fact that Cotton is not in and they go at Williams, try to put some pressure on the youngster. Second and eight from the 48. Durrell in motion to the far side. Green again up the middle. Big yardage to the USC 45-yard line. Keith Davis brought him down for the Trojans. Again, good blocking in there by Frank Cornish, number 68, the left guard. Gaston Green, 185 yards, the most by a Bruin in a USC game. The old record, Kendrick, 182. Brendan McCracken is in there to run the wishbone again on third and two. He keeps it himself. Rolls away from one man, almost lost the football. Got the handle, and he's inside the 40-yard line. Another UCLA first down. If Ron Brown doesn't get a hand on him, bring him down. Let's see if he maintains possession of the ball right here, if he's going to lose it. Yep, he almost loses it. He, boy, I tell you, that's close. That is very, very close. He's rushed four times for 34 yards. And every time they have run, they have started out with the wishbone going to the right side. They have not come back to the left yet. Matt Stevens back in at quarterback. First and 10, UCLA on the USC 38-yard line. Just under 13 minutes to play, third quarter. 31-0 in favor of the Bruins. Green on the reverse to Carl Durrell. He's going to throw it. Looking long to Anderson. He leaps. And he came up with it on the second effort. What a catch by Willie Flipper. A 33-yard pass completion. Carl Durrell to Anderson, and the crowd loving it. It's just a little reverse right here, a quick pitch out here. The green who hands off to Durrell. Now the ball is going to be short. There's no question it's a short throw. Thurman is in good position, but watch Anderson come up here, knock the ball once in the air, disrupts the timing of Thurman, then it comes back down, and Anderson makes a fantastic catch. Gaston Green looking for touchdown number four, and he's inside the five-yard line. number 83 great body control remember we said earlier he's not a big guy he's only 166 pounds but he has great control of his body when he leaps and when he runs pass routes excellent control great quickness second and goal from the three McCracken is in there wishbone and on the option he keeps it trying to sneak in and SC held him up at the one yard line he almost crossed the plane of the goal, it looked like. It was very, very close off of a busted play. Again, the wishbone. Matt Stevens replaces McCracken at quarterback. Third and goal for UCLA at the one-yard line. 31-0 in favor of the Bruins. 11 minutes, 37 seconds left in the third quarter. Larry Thompson telling the guys, hold on a minute here till we get set. Wait till the officials get set. We'll, wi we'll whistle you guys. We'll wave you on to play. One of the officials has gone to the sideline as we look at Larry Thompson to confer with Coach Ted Tolner. Rex Moore is visibly upset. Well, you don't want to see that. The coach hates to see that because you're losing your cool right now. He may have been ejected from the guy. I don't know. He's mad about something. He's really upset. Danny Thompson goes in motion. The pitch goes to Green, and he's in for his fourth touchdown of the game. So Ryan Knight had four big ones last weekend against Cal, 
And today it's Gaston Green, his fourth touchdown against USC. Watch the explosion of the UCLA line. They come off the ball real nice. Green takes a little pitch out, gets right up in there behind a couple of good blocks, busted right up inside the end zone there. I could have run through there. Jeff, you could have run. We could all up in the booth. The whole booth could have gone through that hole. That ties a UCLA record for most touchdowns in a game four. Out of the hold of David Clinton to attempt the PAT. He's only missed one this year. It's up, and it's good. Timeout on the Rose Bowl floor. 11-23 left in the third quarter. And the score now, UCLA 38, USC nothing. So USC, they've got a big mountain to climb. And we'll be back to see if they can do it right after this. Nothing in favor of the Bruins. 11-23 remaining in the third quarter. Okay, big quiz. Who last scored four touchdowns in a USC-UCLA game prior to Gaston Green doing it just moments ago? There he goes. Ah, you knew it all the time, didn't you, Trojan fans? Charles White. Gaston Green now adds his name to the list. Well, you see, when you score four in a game, you get people to come out of the stands and want their picture taken with you. You, know, you can do that when you, when you scored four. Wes Denton sets a kick off for UCLA. Lonnie White, two yards deep in his own end zone. The 20 gets up to the 22 yard line. So a nice job by Lonnie White. Let's see if the Trojans can get something going here now. They're going to have to make something pop. That's a little 16 upsetting. more first downs for the Bruins as compared to USC. Leroy Holt at fullback, Ryan Knight at tailback for the Trojan. Tanner in motion on play action. Pete getting pressure, fires complete to McKee, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line by Chucky Miller and a penalty flag. So we might have a personal foul against UCLA. Let's wait and see. It may be because it happened on the sideline. It may be a personal foul or uh, somebody from the bench said something nasty or, well, it's a big one. So it's probably going to be a personal foul and it may be on Ken Norton. Remember, once that, once that receiver or ball carrier goes out of bounds, if you're coming after him, once he crosses that chalk line, you can't. Dead ball, personal foul against the defense. First down. So they spot the ball at the 42-yard line. First and 10 for the Trojan. Gets up to the 44-yard line. Greg Boland in on the tackle for UCLA, along with Jim Waller. Gain of two yards, it'll be second and eight. Brendan McCracken keeping that arm loose on the UCLA sideline. I'm sure we'll see quite a bit of him, maybe then even the next time that the Bruins get the ball. He's loosening up for a reason, not because of the wishbone. Split backs behind Pete. Dropping straight back. Now he's running out of the pocket. Turns, reverses his field. Now he fires downfield. Intended for John Jackson. Incomplete. He was out of bounds anyway. And we've got a penalty flag down. We're going to have some extracurricular activity over between one of the Bruins and I believe it was Ken Henry who were about 15 yards in front of John Jackson and Craig Rutledge.
beat through that ball an awful long way. And there's that dimension we talked about at the outset. He can scramble. Looked like he was going to be thrown for a long loss, and with his great athletic ability, he was able to get out of it. Holding against UCLA. When you look at uh, Terry Donahue, you'd never know his club was up 38-0. I think he just woke up. You see the blink right there? He took a little quick snooze while all this commotion was going on to get ready for the next uh, 25 minutes of the ball game. Holding. Defense. I think they're going to call that on Chucky Miller, who was playing the left corner and who was responsible for Ken Henry. Lonnie White is into the game for USC. Wide to the left side. Ken Henry, the receiver on the right side. Paul Green is in there at the H-back position. Dropping straight back is Pete. And he fires incomplete, intended for Green. who has the best pair of hands on the USC squad is a sophomore out of Fresno and Pete checking the sideline to see what they want him to run next. Ten minutes, 18 seconds left, third quarter, 38-0 UCLA. Rodney tried to force that ball into Paul Green on that last play. He can't do that and expect to be successful. Protection. Green, beautiful over the shoulder catch, and he's inside the UCLA 15 yard line. Craig Rutledge finally brought him down. A beautiful pass play, good for 35 yards. It's one of the big plays that the Trojans need to get them going. Now, Green's going to come out of the H back position. He's going to find the zone. Again, he's going to find the seam right there. Here he goes by from left to right. Pete reads it very well, lays the ball out there nicely. Look at his head turn on the ball, makes the catch. He's off to the races, gets tripped up by Rutledge. First and 10 for USC, 12-yard line of UCLA. For the first time today, USC fans have something to yell about. Leroy Holt, the lone remaining back. Pete fires, and it's complete to Randy Tanner. Tanner jukes his way for a couple of extra yards down to the seven-yard line. Brought down at that point by cornerback Daryl Henley of UCLA. As you look at Tanner, he's got great quickness. 21 catches, 323 yards, excellent average. They put him out there on Henley in a one-on-one -on -one situation, get the ball to him on a direct pass. Maybe he can sneak by the corner, make the corner fall down. Henley had no part of it. He got some help from Ken Norton also. Outstanding athlete, this guy right here, number 23, Randy Tanner. Out of Belinda, California, second and five from the UCLA seven for the Trojan. Pete. Got to keep the football cut back inside. He's inside the five. He's down to the UCLA two-yard line. Fine run by Rodney Pete. Greg Bolin made the stop for UCLA. It's the advantage that you have when you look at, as you look at Rodney Pete, in that he is a scrambler. He came to SC. He likes to run number one, pass number two. They have converted him from that thinking. They have done a 180 with him. He pass first and run second. And that particular play, excellent choice by Pete to run. And Pete got the first down, so it's a first and goal for the Trojans on the one-yard line. Pete giving final instructions to his backs, who are split behind him. And now, timeout is called by Pete. There was some kind of a mix-up, and he's going to have to talk it over. He's trying to give some directions to Ryan Knight to explain to Ryan, I believe, where he was supposed to line up. So rather than take the snap and maybe create a bad play, he decided to call a timeout, which hopefully will not hurt them down the stretch. We talk about some of the great tradition of USC. You have to mention tailbacks and the man who's started it all way back when, Heisman Trophy winner Mike Garrett. He won it in 1965, and he was a great athlete, wasn't he, Jack? He was fantastic. I played against Mike, and we tried to help him win it in 1964, but he was still young then, so we <laughs> We did our darnest to give it to him that year. Eight minutes, 41 seconds remaining, third quarter, 38-0 in favor of UCLA. 
That's still unbelievable. I, I've said it a half a dozen times tonight, and I'll probably say it again unless SC does something about it, but that's amazing. That's Ryan more. Knight coming off his 204-yard performance of last weekend against Cal. 17 yards on six carries, and look at Gaston Green's numbers. As you said earlier, Jack Snow, that's a season for some running backs in the college game. It really is, and uh, it's an outstanding performance by Green. But let's see what the Trojans can do right here. Leroy Hope, Ryan Knight. Knight gets the pitch, cuts back inside, and he's over for a touchdown. Picks up his sixth touchdown of 1986 and his fifth in the last two games. A little quick toss right here from Rodney Pete. Starts out to his left when he sees the opening. He shoves, jumps up inside. He gets by Rutledge, who was supposed to fill on that. Rutledge has got to take it, fill it, create him to go wider or make the tackle. Rutledge could not do it. Ryan Knight puts a good move on him, gets in six, in six points of country. Don McLean holds. Don Schaefer puts it through the uprights. And now, with 8.38 left in the third quarter, it's UCLA leading USC 38-7. to seven. Traveler three. And in the saddle, Richard Sacco. He's been riding at Traveler for a long, long time, many years. He hasn't uh, ridden him as much today as he would have liked. He's been in the wagon. They just brought him out. Uh... Now, that uh, tennis challenge series is Monday, the 24th, ladies and gentlemen, here on Prime Ticket. Monday, the 24th, for the Michelin and Tennis Challenge Series. Don Schaefer getting ready to kick off for USC. Lake will let it go out of the end zone. So again, a touchback, and the Bruins will have the football at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. That scoring drive for the Trojans took two minutes and 45 seconds. They traveled 78 yards in seven plays. Ryan Knight carrying the football over for the touchdown. Greenwood in at fullback. Gaston Green at tailback behind him. Arbuckle in motion. The fullback, Greenwood, gets the football and he gets up close to the 25 yard line. And a personal foul against USC. Ted Toner, like a caged lion, pacing up and back on the USC sideline. Well, you're not going to you're not going to win football games by doing that as we look at Greg, Greg Coet. Let's see if we can see a late hit coming in right there. Yeah, see, there's no reason for that. You know, when a guy does that, that's the fifth personal foul by a Trojan today. When that's something like that happens, yank him out of the ball game, put him down. He, he does nothing to help your cause. Personal foul against the defense, first down. So Toner. Try to calm Greg Coet down. It's now first and 10 at the 39-yard line for the Bruins. They lead it 38-7, a little over eight minutes to play, third quarter. Long count by Stevens. Gaston Green. Green gets up to the 47-yard line, brought down by a trio of Trojans. Rex Moore, Keith Davis, Wayne Garner on and on the stop for USC. Green has 191 yards on 30 carries today. And that mark is just three yards away from his career high of 194, second and seven for UCLA. Green. 
passes to the 45 up to the 46 yard line. Keith Davis made the stop for USC. Big 99, Tim Ryan, the freshman, 6'5", 250 pounder. This is a new experience for him playing in this type of ball game. So Gaston now has a new career high with that last carry, 195 yards. Matt Stevens fires over the middle, and it's complete to Pickard. Pickard still on his feet, down at the 28-yard line. Brought down by Dwayne Garner of USC. A great effort by Joe Pickard. That play good for 25 yards. The key to this reception right here is the fake that Stevens does. He fakes the pitch, puts the ball on his hip, rolls out to his left side. He finds Pickard, lays it out there, makes a good catch with a Trojan hanging on. Now watch him head upfield. Takes a shot right there, keeps going, gets another shot in there from Dwayne Garner. Excellent job of catching and running by Joe Pickard. So a fine play by Pickard, who's out of Kansas City, Missouri. He's a junior, 6'4", 235 pounds. Remember, he romped 67 yards for a touchdown earlier in the year in a non-conference game against Cal State Long Beach. So the Bruins at the USC 29-yard line, first and 10. Six and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. He signaled. It's an audible right there. Green and he hits a brick wall. He ran into Rex Moore and Moore put him down in a hurry. The reason that he went to that two fingers up to the side of his helmet is that Tim McDonald, the strong safety for SC, came right up and lined up in behind, almost in behind Moore, Rex Moore. When the quarterback sees that, he wants to get that slant in as quick as possible. As he was dropping back, he realized he could, audibleized it. They ran right up the gut. Second and 11 from the 30-yard line. 419 total yards for UCLA. Stevens going long and a great catch and he couldn't hold on. Willie Anderson had it and could not hold on to the football. I'll tell you, that may be the best ball that Matt Stevens has thrown all year. We've got him isolated right here. He's going to run a post route, come down, a little head and shoulder fake. Gets by Brock. Now watch the ball. See if the ball's in a good placement. It's right there, right there on the money. Beautiful. Stevens, who was 10 of 14 for 153, should be 11 of 14. That was a great pass. Just a simple drop. Third and 11 for UCLA. Paco Craig wide left. Darrell wide right. Green gets the call. What vision. He cuts outside, then back inside, and he's up to the 21-yard line of USC, short of a first down. Believe it or not, Gaston Green had never carried for 200 or more yards until today. Well, you know, we've talked to him in the past, and he has said, I'll tell you, you know, I want to play. My, when I get healthy 100%, I'm going to do some things, and he's doing it tonight. Fourth and two from the 21. UCLA is going for it. McCracken's in there. Wishbone on the option. He keeps it. And very, very close to a first down. It depends on the spot. Very, very close. I think he made it, but interesting. You know, you look at fourth down, you say, why don't they try a field goal? Well, what the heck? This UCLA got the first down. They moved the chains. If this was maybe Stanford or Cal or somebody else, they may try and go for a field goal, but this is not. This is USC and UCLA. And on fourth and two, when we have a 31-point lead on the opponent's 20-yard line, we're going to run it for a first down. So the long afternoon continues for Ted Tolner. First and 10 from the 19. Gaston Green inside the 10. Keith Davis finally brings the elusive running back down. Green is just so quick. There's no question about it. He just got such great quickness, great uh, vision. Watch him right here. He's going to start float over to his left, and he decides there's nothing there. I'm going to cut back. Now watch a movie puts on right here, number five, Thurman. He's a little outside shake and jumps back up inside. Otherwise, Thurman would have definitely tattooed him. 
Second and one from the 10 for UCLA. Marcus Greenwood on a quick opener, and he gets down to the seven yard line. Penalty flags go. Once again, tempers flaring. Number 35 is Rex Moore of USC. Well, you know, Rex is a hot-tempered guy. He's always been that way. Even in high school, he was uh, he was quick to fire, and he'd come at you in a minute. You've got to learn to control that. Even if he was the one who wasn't delivering the blow, maybe somebody else took advantage of him. But they always see the second guy, Jeff. It's always the second man that they see. Another personal foul goes against Tolner's USC Trojans. That is the sixth personal foul on USC in this game. If you're wondering about the most yards uh, by a Fury LA against running the defense, back, first down. 274 is the mark. The Otis Brown. A spearing call, as you heard, and what that is is you come in like a torpedo. You use your helmet as a weapon, and you can't do that. You cannot make initial contact with your helmet to try and hurt somebody, and that's what SC did on that last play. First and goal from the three, rolling left to Stevens. He fires into the end zone. Touchdown. Marcus Greenwood, UCLA. So Marcus Greenwood scores his first touchdown for UCLA this season. Great touch pass, too, by Matt Stevens. He's going to roll out here. He's going to allow. Greenwood to get into the end zone and watch him as he just basketball passes that ball in there. Lays it right up there nicely and allows Greenwood to run right under it. He concentration is fantastic. Makes a catch for the touchdown. Brainy on the PAT. It's good. Three minutes and 52 seconds left in the third quarter. And now UCLA ups their lead to 45-7. So everything going. So everything going UCLA's way. And the Bruin faithful, they're enjoying every second of it. That's the kind of bitter rivalry that we have here in this city. We have a dead ball, personal foul against USC will be assessed on the kickoff. That's their seventh one. That's unbelievable. It's getting out of hand. I know it's. Uh, you know, Toler's going to get upset about that because he doesn't. He doesn't coach that kind of football. That's not his style. That last drive by UCLA took four minutes and 46 seconds. The Bruins traveled 80 yards on 11 plays, and then Stevens hitting Greenwood for the three-yard touchdown pass. Elsewhere in college football, Penn State knocked off Pittsburgh by 20. Number seven, Ohio State lost to number six, Michigan, 26 to 24. So Bo will be coming out here for the Rose Bowl. Arkansas shut out SMU, 41-0. 74-10, the final, Texas A&M over TCU. 21-17, Rice defeated Air Force. 2017 Oklahoma over Nebraska. Just under four minutes to play third quarter 45 seven in favor of UCLA. Cleveland Coulter puts a knee down in the end zone. Marcus Greenwood you bet he's thrilled a touchdown his first of the year and it comes against Crosstown rival USC. His first touchdown reception of the year also, so he's an extremely happy young man out there. There's no question of that. He's back in the lineup playing some good football. What's it like in a big game? You did it plenty of times to catch a touchdown. What's the emotion? What's the feeling? Greg, right, there's two ways to look at it. We can go into that in a minute here. There's two different ways to look at it. Rodney Pete drops straight back. Fires a sideline pass complete to Randy Tanner. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 28-29 yard line. 
Daryl Henley in on the stop along with Craig Rutledge. So Pete, not having one of his better games, 8 of 14, 82 yards, and one interception. Although really not that bad, though, 8 of 14, better than 50%. He just hadn't spent that much time on the field. step gets up to the 37 yard line before he is thrown down by Carnell Lake Lake out of Inglewood three minutes and 38 seconds remaining in third quarter good for a first down for the Trojans Eric Affolter Randy Tanner wide right. Paul Green is in as the H-back. Flares it off to Knight, and Ryan is hit immediately by Ken Norton, Jr. Great play by Norton. He did a nice job of reading that play. He played it very, very well. He comes from the left side as his backer, and he, he recognizes a quick screen pass out here. Pete looks downfield. Now he's going to dump it off which he does to Tanner in there, but by that time it's too late. Norton had read the offensive lineman as they were coming down the line of scrimmage who set up the wall. He snuck in behind him, made a nice play. Second and 15 for USC from the 32-yard line. Pete with good protection over the middle, complete to McKee, and McKee is brought down at the 42-yard line. Again, Ken Norton Jr. in on the stop. He was helped out by left quarterback Chucky Miller. Rodney Pete checks the sideline for the next play. Clock is ticking. A little over two minutes to play. Third quarter, 45-7. Our score in favor of UCLA. Eric Appholter wide to the right side. the fingertips of John Jackson. Chucky Miller covering on the play, and he uh, deflected the pass. Well, you're right. Uh, I think it was Miller. He covered him all right. He covered him right up. He nailed Jackson. He's wobbling. You watch Jackson, number one. He's going to come down. He's going to wind up in the middle of the field. He's going to be open. The ball's going to go off his fingertips, and I believe it's 37. Chucky Miller's going to come across and really lower the boom. There you see 37. Now watch him gear in. Watch 37 right there. Wham. Hello. On fourth and five, USC is going to go for it. Pete to throw. Lonnie White and he makes a nice catch and is thrown down at the 40 yard line by Craig Rutledge that play was good for 18 yards and a big first down for USC White's number 82 you're going to see him come down now he's going to work his way across the field now right there in the middle now watch him come back across the field excellent job tucks the ball away I tell you, a great read by Rodney Pete he stood in the pocket very nicely he stood there a long time delivered the pass behind Pete. Again, good protection. He double pops and he fires complete to Ryan Knight. Knight is brought down at the UCLA 37-yard line by Greg Boland. John Jackson was shaken up and so he's being attended to on the USC bench. He may have really just been dinged and had either had the wind knocked out of him or maybe slightly knocked a little, uh, little unconscious. Nothing bad, though, but he came off a little woozy, a little wobbly. Brings up second and seven from the UCLA 37-yard line, 45-7. UCLA leading big, under a minute to play third quarter. Pete fires over the middle, and it's deflected. Greg Boland broke up the play, intended for tight end Eric McKee. Well, UCLA, they'll be happy with that, the Bruins. Well, as long as they try to keep pushing that ball, 
from that uh, line of scrimmage and only seven to eight yards downfield. They'll be content with that, and they will most likely give the Trojans that. What the Trojans have got to do now is they've got to start pushing the ball from that 18 to 22 yard area up the field, get the ball to their receivers, and try and gain some respectability right now. Tanner and White wide the left side. Ken Henry, the receiver on the right side, split backs behind Rodney Pete, who may have just audibleized. He drops straight back. And he fires. It was intended for Randy Tanner, but he had fallen down. He slipped coming out of his break. There was a curl route, and as he came back inside, and you could see it, he just fell down. It's been that kind of a day for the Trojans. Watch Tanner up at the top, number 23, Plants. He gets shoved, there's no question that, but really, he falls down, his feet just go out from under him. 49 seconds left, third quarter, fourth and eight. Pass is thrown, and it's complete. Ken Henry makes his first reception of the ball game, and it's a big one inside the 15-yard line. Good for 27 yards. Ken Henry's a big guy now. He'll be coming from the right side of your screen on a slant. Pete lays the ball in there, watch it. He goes up there nicely, cradles the ball with his body, picks up the first down, takes a couple of shots, gets hit by Allen Dial, number 27, but a big first catch, a fourth down situation. Henry comes up with it and makes a big catch. He is the leading receiver on the Trojan Club. 743 yards on 39 catches, seven touchdowns. We have a player shaken up, a UCLA player, Chucky Miller, who is up on his feet. Oh, he'll be okay. He's trotting off under his own power again. With the ferocity and ferocious hitting going on out there, these guys are getting dinged, dinged up just a little bit. They're losing some concentration. They get hit in the head or whatever, and they lose it for a moment or two. But when they can get up and get off the field themselves, they'll be okay. First and 10, USC at the UCLA 14-yard line on the option. He keeps it. He gets up to the 8-yard line. Tempers are flaring. Alan Dial having words with Brent Parkinson. Brent Parkinson was also waving to the uh, fans in the stands of the Southern End Zone on that last play. And Dial took exception to it. Yes, yes. There's a gun ending the third quarter here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And so far, it's been UCLA's day. They lead USC 45. Well, USC's cheerleaders haven't had a whole lot to cheer about right now. UCLA 45, USC 7 as we get ready for the final 15 minutes in this crosstown rivalry. USC with a second and three at the UCLA seven-yard line. Is that right? You know, as we looked at those cheerleaders, it reminded me that UCLA, from a statistical point, or SC, from a statistical point, has always had two great things, their band and a tailback. <laughs> and pretty good-looking cheerleaders. Yes. <laughs> down to the UCLA three-yard line. The statistical picture in this one after three, 14 more first downs for UCLA. Look at the discrepancy in rushing yards, not so much in passing yardage, but the total yard picture, 446 for the Bruins, 178 for USC. Again, no turnovers for the Bruins, just one for USC, and the time of possession, heavily favoring the Bruins. First and goal for USC. The pitch, Ryan Knight. He cuts back inside. Did he cut the plane? Very, very close. No sign from the official. So apparently, he did not get into the end zone. They're going to mark it as close as you can get. About one foot short. 
here. Ten and a half D, as that official was right there. One foot short. They'll probably go back in this time. Give, give him the ball, get it up inside and score. Ryan Nine, and he flies over for the touchdown. Fancy right here. Just watch him take the handoff from Pete. He's going to come up about the two yard line, leaves his feet up over the pile, he's covering the ball up very nicely, heads into the end zone for the second touchdown. Ryan Knight, the junior, 6'1, 205 pounds, out of Riverside, where he had such a tremendous high school career at Rubido. So now, Don Schaefer will try to convert on the PAT. Schaefer has been perfect in that department this season. 25 of 25 and he'll try to make it 26 in a row in a moment. They may be going for two. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to go for two points. Leroy Holt, the lone remaining back. Lonnie White comes in motion. Pete rolling right. Pressure into the end zone and he overshoots his receiver it's out of bounds so the PAT is not successful Carnell Lake was putting tremendous pressure on Rodney Pete so UCLA leads 45 to 13 as we take one more look at Ryan Knight going over the top coming right at you now if you're the middle linebacker or a defensive back this is what it looks like now watch how high he gets up over the top he's got the ball covered up with both hands he lands into the end zone for the touchdown talking right. about touchdowns a man who scored a lot of them he won a Heisman Trophy in 1968 the one and only O.J. Simpson the juice. Well, was he something in high school? And was he something in junior college? And was he something in college? And was he something as a pro? He was outstanding. Forty-five, thirteen in favor of UCLA. Just under fourteen minutes to play in the game. Great NBA action tomorrow night here on Prime Ticket. The Lakers, who have won eight in a row, they're red hot, and they'll take on the Central Division leading Milwaukee Bucks live from the Forum. That should be quite a ball game. It'll be uh, interesting to see how Jack Sigma fits into Don Nelson's system. So don't miss it. The Lakers and Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow night. We'll kick it off with a warm-up show at 7:15 right here on Prime Ticket. Carnell Lake and Daryl Henley, the deep men for UCLA. Don Schaefer ready to kick off for USC. Schaefer, nice kick. Touchback, and UCLA will have the football first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. For USC on their last scoring drive, 80 yards, 14 plays, just under five minutes, and Knight with a one yard over the top touchdown, his second touchdown of the game. That means he scored all of USC's touchdowns in the last two ball games. Four last weekend against Cal and two in this one. Some idiot running out on the football field here at the Rose Bowl. He's at the 25. He's at the 30. He's out of bounds. They're still chasing him. He's into the stands. He's made his escape. He is definitely from Caltech, I think. <laughs> First and ten for the Bruins. Matt Stevens at quarterback. James Primus at full. Gaston Green with a burst. And he's out of bounds at the 29-yard line. 
I'll tell you a point I, I want to make. I love watching this guy run. There's no question of it. But you know, I think enough, enough with him. You may want to get some other people in there. He's he's just too valuable a commodity to lose. And at this stage of the ball game, and really, I don't think uh, any question that UCLA should come out on top. Brendan McCracken is in there, and they're running the wishbone formation. Gaston Green crosses the 30 and should have enough for the first down. And here comes Matt Stevens back into the game. Clock ticking, 13 minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. The late Red Sanders back in 1952 made an interesting comment, Jeff. He said, it's not a matter of life or death. It's a little more important than that, winning this ball game. Penalty flags. I believe it will go against USC. Somebody jumped. Dan Owens, number 90. A little over anxious. Yeah, there have some been some interesting quotes as we were talking about before the ball game about Outside this rivalry. rivalry against the Trojans. I wonder if uh, Marcus Cotton still offside defense dead ball. Marcus Cotton all week, you know, quotes from the players have been in the newspaper and then quotes from coaches and past players and whatnot. Marcus Cotton, the, the quote I remember the most is the one he talked about wanting to play on the USC basketball team because he can slam dunk. That's right. I wanted to call him and say, you got a big ball game this Saturday night. First and five for the Bruins. Green and he's hit and dropped at the 35-yard line. Dan Owens, the first Trojan to hit him. I don't think we've given, I know I haven't given enough credit tonight to these guys up front for the Bruins. have done an outstanding job. The offensive line, Global, Pankoff, Alexander, Cornish, Swanevelt, Ray, Bill Lobos has been in there also. Outstanding offensive production for these guys. On the play action, rolling left is Stevens. And he fires incomplete. It was intended for Paco Craig, but he had turned and was headed downfield when Stevens released the football. Timmy McDonald was covering on the play for USC. As we saw, Paco Craig was heading south when the ball was going east. What happens is the receiver ran out of sideline. He got to a point where he had to make a decision, and he did. He decided to turn it up. He turned it up, and as he as he went up, Stevens released the ball, and neither one of them looked real coordinated on that play. Danny Thompson replaces James Primus for UCLA, third and six from their own 35-yard line. Play action again. Stevens fires complete to Durrell, and he's brought down by L.C. Brock at midfield. 14 yards on that pass play. Matt Stevens to Carl Durrell. Durrell out of uh, San Diego. He made two catches last weekend against Washington to become only the fourth player in Bruin history to record 100 career receptions. Good receiver. Excellent receiver. 27 catches coming into the nice ball game. Big play man for the Bruins. First and 10 from midfield. Gaston Green. Strong safety Tim McDonald, who did a great job coming up to make the play. McDonald read it very, very well, and, and he knew that, well, for all intents and purposes, they're going to give the ball to Green. So as soon as I read the pulling of the guard or look at Green, see his eyes, he looks like he's going to get the ball and want to shoot the gap. That's what he did. He comes up with a big tackle. Bob Garibaldi into the ball game for UCLA, and he's one of the wide receivers off to the right along with Darrell. 
goes to Gaston Gray. And he's just shoved out of bounds by Junior Thurman. Well, you have to be talented when you're a running back by Gaston Green. The other team knows that they have to key on you, and you still gain over 200 yards. If there's no question of that. There's, that's a, uh, a tribute to his ability as a runner. Great peripheral vision, great foot speed. He does it all. Third down and eight from the 48. Stevens stayed in the pocket nicely. And a beautiful diving catch. Paco Cray. 12 yards on the play. Watch Stevens. Now, this is a good lead by Stevens. He throws it low, outside, away from the defender. Paco Craig will make it run an out route right there on your left. Watch him extend his body. Go out there, grab the ball, bring it into his chest, keep the elbows in. Nice job of receiving. Paco has surprising speed. He's been clocked uh, at 4-5 in the 40. 34 yards, three catches in this one. So that gives him 16 catches on the season and three TDs. First and 10 from the USC 37 for UCLA. 10 minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. 45-13 in favor of the Bruins. James Primus, the ball carrier. Tried to sneak one in the, on the Trojans on that one. Just a little, I'm going to roll to my left and kind of reach back and give the ball to the fullback, give it to Greenwood, but uh, Dan Owens, the nose tackle, would have none of it. Paco Craig replacing Bob Garibaldi for UCLA. for a first down. I'll tell you a guy the Trojans could use right about now, and that's Marv Guru. I think Marv was at SC as, as an assistant coach for about 40 years, I believe. He recruited me when I was in high school. You got to go back a ways if you, <laughs> if you were recruiting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more than a dozen. Third and ten for UCLA. Play action. Stevens now flips it complete to Derek Tunnell. Short of a first down, however. Brendan McCracken comes into the game replacing Matt Stevens. They're going to try the wishbone on fourth and short. Marcus Greenwood, Danny Thompson, and Gaston Green behind Brendan McCracken. And on the option, he keeps it. And he did not get the first down. He's short. Tackle made by Tim McDonald, helped out by Rex Moore. Trojans played that very nicely over there on that right side that last time. They took the fullback, stuffed him, played the quarterback very well, played the trail back. They had each guy responsibility. He was in the right place at the right time. A little over nine minutes to play in this one as Rodney Pete comes back into the game for USC. It's UCLA leading the Trojans 45 to 13. There's the story. Complete to John Jackson, then he dropped the ball. Now John Jackson just elbowed Daryl Henley, and the Bruins want a flag and don't get it. They just lost his concentration. They're they're getting their uh, handed to him in a basket, and uh, he knows he should have made that catch, and he didn't. Seven yards to 185. That's been the difference. Pete rolling left. Now he plants, and it's batted down by Ken Norton Jr., who could not come up with the interception. 
Ken Norton has really developed into one of the fine inside linebackers in the Pac-10 as we take another look. Norton, the 6'1", 226-pound junior. You'll see him coming right there, number 41, gets a hand on it, tries to pop it in the air, and then make the diving reception. Cannot do it. He had a great game last year against USC when he had 15 tackles. Brent Parkinson, the weak side guard for USC, shaken up and comes to the sideline. He's out of Canyon Country, a freshman. Got a heck of a career ahead of him. 6'6", 250 pounds. Now, when you hear weak side, that doesn't mean he's the weakest of the two guards. He just plays opposite the tight end. You heard me say weak, boy. He'll find me in an alley and do a job. <laughs> he drops straight back. Stays in the pocket nicely. And a great hit by Allen Dial to jar the ball loose from Lonnie White. tell you what there is some popping some major league popping going out there he hit him so hard dials even hurting to watch 82 who's in the middle of your screen he's going to run there he is right there now you're going to see dial come right now watch the timing and fall boom bang holy smoke what a pop having been on the receiving end of that let me tell you what that that scares you it's not so much getting hurt the receiver it just it's the the shock of getting that much of a blow it scares the heck out of you Alan Dial is hurting, and they're attending to him on the UCLA sideline. And we've got another roughing the kicker call. USC swarming over the football. And it dies inside the 30-yard line. But Jim Waller roughed up punter Chris Burl. Let's take a look right here now. Once he's extended, nobody can touch him. Well, yeah, he did make contact technically, but again, another good good acting job, I got to say that. But so Jim Waller, who has really made quite a uh, recovery from a pinched nerve in his neck that he suffered last Saturday up in Seattle when the Bruins played Washington. So USC will keep the football and have a first down. At their own 43-yard line. Here's the official call. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker against the defense. First down. <laughs> 45-13. The score. 8:40 remaining in the football game. Fumbled by Pete, but he picks it up. Crosses midfield. He's up to the 49-yard line of UCLA, and we have a penalty flag. So a nice recovery on what could have been a loss by Rodney Pete. Got a hold against the Trojans. That's the second time today that he has dropped, or there has been a bad exchange between he and John Catton at the center. Holding offense, still first down. A frustrated USC head coach and staff. Eight minutes, 25 seconds left in the game. First and 20 from the 33 yard line for the Trojans. Terry Toomey puts him down. A sack for Terry Toomey inside the 25-yard line of USC. A little sack and a little dance right there to show how happy he is. Great job of pursuing. Toomey is a nose guard. He's not real big, 228 pounds. Pete will drop back. He's going to take off. Now watch Toomey stay with him. He's got him by the jersey. He's not about to let him go. Takes him down rather nicely. Good effort by Toomey. Stays with him all the way. Toomey out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. First team, all Pac-10. That'll bring up a second and 29. Pete firing to Paul Green, who cannot hold on. And you won't see Green drop a pass that's catchable very often. No, he does have a good pair of hands. That's two. He, I think they've thrown the ball to him three times tonight. He's come up with one catch. 
On that play right there, granted he should have made the catch, but the quarterback can take a little of the zip off it. If you're going to zip it that hard, stick it into his numbers. Third and 29 for USC on their own 24-yard line. Seven and a half to play in this one. 45-13, UCLA. They led 31-0 at halftime. Rodney Pete now rolling left. He's throwing, and he overshoots his receivers. Lonnie White and Ken Henry were over there, and Ken Norton was putting pressure on Rodney Pete. So Chris Burrow will punt again. He's going for his fourth Emmy nomination right here. I say that in jest. I admire you, Chris, because you're taught how to do that. You're supposed to do that. Any type of contact, you've got to go down and act like you're going to David Clinton deep for UCLA. Takes a nice roll for USC, and it rolls dead at the Bruin 30-yard line. That's a 46-yard punt for Chris Burrell. And we've got a penalty flag back inside the 25-yard line, so the officials will talk it over. We've had as many penalty flags as personal fouls, huh? <laughs> it's, a, it's a sloppy game. I, I, great offensive performance by UCLA, and in particular Gaston Green, but a real sloppy performance with holding calls, unnecessary roughness. There's no need for that. Even though this is a great rivalry, you still don't have to play like that at times. Holding against the receiving team. The penalty is assessed from the post scrimmage spot. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a timeout here at the Rose Bowl. Seven minutes and 12 seconds left in the game. Our score, UCLA 45, USC 13. We'll be back in just a moment. Back out here at the Rose Bowl, 7-12 to play. UCLA 45, USC 13. UCLA has the football first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Mike Farr, who wears number nine, is into the game for UCLA. His brother, Mel Farr Jr., is out with an injury. Marcus Greenwood. It's up to the 23-yard uh, line. Junior Thurman helping out on the tackle for USC. Keith Davis also was there. Marcus Greenwood, one of the seniors on the UCLA squad, scored a touchdown earlier in this one. He's out of Bakersfield. Picked up four yards. It'll be second and six. Mike Farr in motion. Stevens being chased by Craig Correct. Fumble. Recovered. Dan Owens of USC. So USC has a first and 10 inside the 15-yard line of UCLA. Great Coet blindsided Stevens to jar the ball loose, and Owens picked it up. Coet's going to come from the back side, which means the right side. Watch him zero in right here now. Boy, he's going to lower the boom, knocks the ball out with his right hand. Heads up play by Greg Coet. Then big number 90, Dan Owens picks it up, runs over Larry Thompson, the official. Thompson says, uh-uh, it's down right here. <laughs> Dan Owens with the recovery out of Whittier. Ball is spotted on the 13-yard line. Pete rolling right. Fires for the end zone. Touchdown reception. You gotta watch Pete roll out. Tanner, uh, me 
time up at the top is running a square out about three yards deep in the end zone. Watch the ball right to the pylon. Good pass, good route by the receiver. Marcus Turner, the corner for UCLA, gets there just a little bit late. Second touchdown reception of the season for Randy Tanner, who can throw the ball as well. He's thrown a couple of touchdown passes this season. And he's going to come out for a breather along with Ken Henry. Trojan will be going for two more. Fullback Ryan Knight a tailback. Knight gets the pitch, trying to cut back inside. Fumbles a football. So again, USC not successful with the two-point conversion. Six minutes and 14 seconds left in the game, and the score now is UCLA 45, USC 19. The official attendance has been announced. 98,370. That'd be a whole lot of people sitting in here screaming and yelling tonight. And I'll tell you, most of those, about 72,000, were out in the parking lot at 1030 this morning when I drove up. Getting an early start on the festivities. There's Marcus Cotton, who hurt himself in the first half in civilian clothes. USC getting ready to kick off Don Schaefer. The outside kick and jumping on it and falling down is Danny Thompson of UCLA. So the ball is on the USC 49 yard line. The Bruins have it first and 10. I'd like to take a moment to thank my statistician, Dennis Manishin, who just does a tremendous job. Glad to have him as part of our broadcast, and my father, Jeff Nathanson. injuries all season long knee problem hamstring problem Eric Ball and we all remember what he did in the Rose Bowl last year he had one of those once in a lifetime performances fantastic performance last year in the Rose Bowl and came out of nowhere basically pretty want to know who this guy Eric Ball well he's the third string tailback at UCLA gained four yards on that carry it'll be second and six his way down to the 37 yard line of USC. Five minutes, 28 seconds left in the game. Eric Ball, six, one and a half, 209 pounds, a sophomore. He's only carried the ball 20 times this season for 92 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Steven keeps the football. He goes down at the 40-yard line. There are the man in the gray sweater, Dennis Manishin. 16th consecutive year doing the stats for the TV and USC UCLA game. I call him Mr. Staff. Is that Dennis Mission? Who? Is that Dennis? I thought he was much younger than that. <laughs> Second down and 12 from the 39-yard line. Carl Durrell and David Clinton wide to the left side. Thompson and Ball out of the eye. Ball. Ball is down. 
down at the 34-yard line. Rex Moore in on the tackle along with Keith Davis. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I pity the team that has to play either one of these teams, especially I see next week. Who's that going to be? It's that team that... Uh, once in a while, they they pull out green jerseys, and I can't think of the name. Uh, uh, the Packers. It'll come, it'll come to me. The Packers. <laughs> Eric Ball slips away from Dan Owens, and then finally is brought down at the 32-yard line. Keith Davis and Rex Moore was also over there. Ah, we shouldn't do that to your alma mater. It's been a long year for Lou Holtz, hasn't it? It's been a long year for Lou Holtz, and I'll tell you what, when he sees this film, uh, he's going to be hes going to be a little nervous have to come in here next year, next week and play the Trojans because they're going to be very, very upset. Heck, he, he probably figured this would be a real close ball game, and he'd like his team to maybe whip USC and make the Notre Dame season. But right. now, SC's going to be out for blood. Yes, they are, and they will probably get a lot of Irish green blood, too, next week. Fourth and four for UCLA. Mike Carr in motion. And he is down at the 31 yard line. So USC will take over on downs. Seconds left, 45 19 in favor of UCLA. UCLA fans are still having all kinds of fun. Rodney Pete drops straight back to pass. Now he flares it off to Knight and he can't hold on to it. Melvin Jackson hit him before he had full control. Incompleted forward pass. Attempts, 14 completions for 144 yards, one touchdown, and he's been picked off once in the ball game. Second and ten from the 31 for the Trojans. A little over three minutes to play in this football game. Complete to Lonnie White. Right. He finds Lonnie White open. And then White is driven out of bounds by Dennis Price. One of the frustrated USC players, Gary Willison. It intended for Eric Appholder, incomplete. Appholder, you might recall, had a big 18-yard touchdown catch versus Stanford. So that stops the clock with 2.57 remaining. Lonnie White and Randy Tanner come wide to the left side. Rodney Pete again going for Lonnie White, but it's incomplete. Craig Rutledge covering on the play for UCLA. So USC's defense coming into this game had allowed just one touchdown and three field goals in the last three games. But today, the roof caved in, and they're trailing 45-19 with under three minutes in the game. Yeah. 
Bates firing for Randy Tanner, but he overshot his intended receiver. Rodney Pete has really made strides as a quarterback. He's worked hard to improve as a straight drop back passer because we know he's talented when it comes to rollouts and keeping the football on the option. One thing that he feels he's got to work more on is is like Jack Snow said earlier forcing it particularly in third and long situations. And he fires complete to Lonnie Smith, or Lonnie White, rather, and he gets inside the 40-yard line. Melvin Jackson covering on the play. And we've got a penalty flag going down. Brent Parkinson, very, very upset. setting personal fouls so the USC UCLA rivalry the emotions always ride high but when you're getting beat up like USC is today it just comes out and as far as Ted Toner is concerned it's come out in some of the wrong ways on the other side of the field is Jerry Dolly. foul against the defense. Dead ball. Personal foul against the offense. Player rejected from each team. First down. Brent Parkinson, I believe, is the man who was ejected from USC. I'm not sure who was ejected from UCLA. My guess is that it was number 94, Mike Lodish. That's unofficial. So USC has a football first and 10 at the UCLA 38 yard line with two minutes and 37 seconds left in the game. It's number 93 Daryl Henderson who was a starter at defensive tackle earlier in the year and he does a great job for the Trojans. Beat again to throw. And he fires. Nice catch by Lonnie White. And he's down right near the first down marker at the 28-yard line. So the Trojans just a little bit short of the first down. Second and less than a yard. Chased by Terry Toomey, and he fires incomplete, and we've got pass interference. Randy Tanner, the intended receiver, and Daryl Henley was all over him. 45-19, UCLA leading. One minute, 47 seconds, all that remains in this game. Pete throwing into the end zone, intended for Paul Green, incomplete. I believe that Ken Norton Jr. may have deflected that ball. The pass is incomplete. The intended receiver, Eric Appholder, was out of bounds. Gerald Henley covering for UCLA. Third and ten. He makes a nice catch, touchdown USC. So Randy Tanner on the receiving end of the 15 yard touchdown strike thrown by Rodney Pete. That is the second touchdown reception of the game for Tanner. It was a nice route too, Jeff. You can see it from down here. I tell you, he ran a beautiful corner route, was wide open. He laid the ball out to him nicely in the corner. He made a nice catch, two-handed catch, brought it inside before he went out of bounds. And again.
again, USC will try for a two-point conversion. This will be their third effort. They have not been successful yet. Beat getting pressure, fires, and complete intended for Lonnie White. So... player before traveling the necessary yardage. And Eric Ball thrown for a loss. And Gaston Green, the prime ticket player of the game, and we certainly hope to have an interview with him following the ball game. Eric Ball finding his way for some yardage, and he gets inside the USC 40-yard line. and he's up to the 35-yard line. They stop the clock for a moment with 16 seconds left. And now we see Terry Donahue with a big grin. So Donahue now starting to do his own celebrating on the UCLA sideline here at the Rose Bowl. Donahue's record against USC as the clock is ticking again. Moves up to five and six. Three seconds, two seconds, one. There's the gun. So another game in this great rivalry between USC and UCLA is history. And a disappointed Ted Toner, the class act that he is, congratulating some of the UCLA players. And he'll find the Bruin head man, Terry Donahue, and congratulate him in a moment. The final score from the Rose Bowl, UCLA 45 and USC 25. We'll be back and hopefully visit. I'm ticket player of the game, Gaston Green, in just a moment. Jeff, we have Gaston Green, our player of the game. 39 rushes, 224 yards, and four touchdowns. Big night for you. Feel good, do you? Yeah, I feel real great. Uh, we wanted to come out here and, and uh, try to redeem ourselves from last year because SC beat us. We wanted to come out and uh, try to get back at them. And offensive lines are just blocking real good for me and our defense play. We, were, and we came out with the victory. You've kind of had maybe a slow start this season. Injuries, nitpicking injuries, bumps and bruises, but tonight you seem to have it in full gear. How have you built up for this ball game tonight? Oh, we've been building up uh, real tough because every year, you know, this is this is our this is the biggest game of the season for us. So all week we just been uh, focusing in on SC and it, it paid off real well for us. Next stop is where Anaheim Stadium, right? Yeah. Next stop is the Freedom Bowl, and hopefully we can uh, go into the Freedom Bowl and do what we did here tonight. Good luck to you. Had a great night tonight. Have a good one on the 30th. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay. Gaston Green. Now, let's go back to Jack Snow, who has UCLA head coach Terry Donahue. We're here with Coach Donahue. You've got to feel happy after today's outcome. Well, we're very happy, Jack. This is a big victory for our team. We've been a little bit uh, maligned and beleaguered, as you know, and uh, to win the big game like this, it saves our whole season and gives us a chance to uh, have a real edge on the uh, Trojans in the 1980s, and that's important to our program. Do you approach this type of game, Coach, any differently? This this past week, is any different than normal? No, it's always uh, when the Bruins and the Trojans square off, it's a great rivalry, and we approached it. Uh, we were a little bit discouraged and down, but uh, we just approached it like we were going to go out and play our hearts out, and we did that, and a 20-point victory over the, uh, our crosstown rival. I can't complain. I'm delighted. Well, I'll tell you, a guy that impressed me not only was Gaston Green, which was obvious, but your quarterback, Ramsey, he had an outstanding night tonight. Well, Matt Stevens, our quarterback. Oh, excuse me, not right. Ramsey. Stevens, I'm sorry. Ramsey's mother will love that, but uh, uh, Matt's mother won't. But anyway, Matt Stevens is a good player, and he had a, a night of nights for him, and I'm just delighted he could end his career in this Rose Bowl with that kind of a game because he's been frustrated, and he's taken some heat, and it's nice that he ended it like this. Your next stop is? We're going to go down to the Freedom Bowl. We're very excited. Uh, we're delighted that the Freedom Bowl invited us. We're going to play either BYU or Air Force or someone uh, to be named, and uh, I think our team will do a nice job, and hopefully we can finish our season 8-3-1. You've come a long way. You've done a good job. We want to wish you the best. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's Jeff. go back upstairs now to Jeff. The final score, UCLA 45, UCLA, USC 25. Now for my broadcasting partner, Jack Snow. I'm Jeff Witcher, bidding all of you a very pleasant good night.